Sergeant, please start your recordings. Computer recording started. Cloud recording has begun. Backup is rolling. Sergeant Martinez, you may begin with your opening statement. Good morning and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Committee on Transportation. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their video. To minimize uh, disruption, please silence your electronic devices. And if you wish to submit testimony, you may do so via email at the following address, testimony at council.nyc.gov. Once again, that email address is testimony at council Dot nyc dot gov. Thank you for your cooperation. We are ready to begin. Thank you, Sergeants, and everyone at the council that worked so hard to be sure that not only uh, myself and my colleague represented the administration and the advocate get the opportunity to be part of this remote hearing, but also to all New Yorkers also had the opportunity to be able to follow uh, how we discuss this important issue. And good morning. Thank you all for joining the Committee on Transportation's virtual hearing today on the oversight topic of TLC Medallion Relief Program, and also uh, and how TLC is working in supporting the black car and the liberal sector. Uh, first, I'm going to turn it over to our committee council to go over some procedure items and also including acknowledge that my other colleagues who are here at this hearing. Thank you, Chair. First, I would like to recognize the following council members Council Member Rose, Council Member Cabrera, Council Member Holden, Council Member Ku, Council Member Brooks Powers. Council Member Minchaka. I am Jessica Steinberg Albin, Council to the Transportation Committee of the New York City Council. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone that you will be on mute until you are called on to testify when you will be unmuted by the host. Please listen for your name to be called. I will periodically announce who the next panelist will be. The first panelist will be from the administration. Commissioner Aloisi Aradia Jarmosha from the Taxi and Limousine Commission. During the hearing, if council members would like to ask a question, please use the Zoom raise hand function and I will call on you in order that you have used the Zoom raise hand function. Unless otherwise indicated by the chair, we will be limiting council member questions to five minutes, including answers. Chair Rodriguez, I would like to turn it back to you for your opening statement. Thank you, Jessica. Today, the Committee on Transportation, sorry. Today, the Committee on Transportation convenes remotely to hold this important hearing on the Taxi Limousine Commission's Medallion Relief Program and supporting the black car and liberal sectors. As we know, the TLC is charged with the regulation and oversight of taxi cabs, mm -hmm. which include yellow taxi cabs, street hail liberal, for hire vehicle, commuter vans, and paratransit vehicles. Mm -hmm. Over the last several years, the for hire industry has experienced tremendous changes with the introduction of our basis for hire vehicles in the city. The number of licensed Ohio vehicles has dramatically increased in 2011. This has led to a decrease in the number of medallions, taxi trips in the city, and a decline in the daily fares collected per taxi medallion. As we all know, taxi medallions have seen a rapid decline in value. In 2013, the average sale price for corporate medallions and individual medallions was about $1.2 million and $890,000. Since 
Six years later, the average sale price fell to about 165,000. As medallion value decreased, so did the number of fares collected causing many taxi medallion owners on an unimaginable, imaginable financial hardship. Many owners, drivers, and advocates have called for the city to create a taxi medallion debt forgiveness program. That was part of the whole work that we did when the council passed a bill creating the Yellow Taxi Medallion Task Force that put a specific and a strong recommendation. Recently, the TLC announced the creation of a 65 million taxi medallion owner relief program to help financially distress medallion owners work with lenders to restructure medallion related loans and provide up to 9,000 in additional, additional monthly debt payment assistance. This is a good initiative, but this is not enough. And that's why I would like to ask City Hall to add an additional $93 million over the next 30 years. It means around $3.2 million every year in order to help more medallion owners and to help to alleviate this crisis. As of September 27, 2021, the TLC commissioner indicated that 26 participants had received over 5 million in debt forgiveness and cancellations with an additional 900 participants waiting to be served. The administration believed that the program could result in a total of $500 million of debt forgiveness of thousands of drivers. Although this sounds promising, we have heard many advocates and drivers led by the New York Taxi Workers Alliance that the financial assistance provided by this relief program is not enough. Just this week, members of the New York, members of all New York City congressional delegation, also including Senator Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, sent a letter to the mayor supporting the creation of a new program such as that proposed by the Taxi Workers Alliance and also supported by all members of the Medallion Task Force that worked for months uh, before COVID. Many believe that the city failed to prevent the medallion debt crisis. It is now our responsibility to ensure that we fix this issue and hope the many drivers who are still facing in financial hardship. Many of them were the one providing the service during COVID. And we have the responsibility to provide all financial support that we can to bring them back. During today's hearing, the committee hopes to gather additional information on the medallion relief program to determine how effective it will be in helping med more medallion owners. The committee will also discuss the problems that the traditional black car and liberal sectors are currently experiencing and explore ways in which the city can support this service. After we hear from the administration, we will hear from medallion owners and the representative, medallion owners and representatives of, of taxi drivers too, to learn more about how they have been affected by this crisis and whether they believe the system TLC relief program will provide the support they need and to hear from them why they also believe that by adding additional $93 million over the next 30 years will expand the numbers of, of medallion owners and taxi drivers that will benefit from this program. Before we hear from the administration, I will now have our moderator and committee council recognize what we did that one by there's if there's any other members with us and also, and then call on the administration to testify and administer the oath. Thank you, Chair. I would like to acknowledge that Council Member Miller has joined us. I will now call on TLC Commissioner Aloisi Aradia Jarmuschek to testify 
At this time, I will administer the affirmation. Please raise your right hand. Do you affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth in your testimony before this committee and to respond honestly to council member questions? Yes. Thank you. You may begin your testimony when ready. So good morning, Chair Rodriguez and members of the Transportation Committee. I am Aloisi Heredia Jarmashuk, Commissioner and Chair of the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission. Thank you for inviting me to speak with you about the TLC's progress implementing the Medallion Relief Program, the MRP, as well as our efforts to support the black car and livery sectors. First, I would like to discuss the current state of our taxi industry, which has continued to gain strength as the city recovers from, COVID, from the COVID-19 pandemic. As you know, businesses and tourists are returning to New York City and passenger demand for taxi service is steadily increasing. For the week of September 26, taxis made 739,964 trips a more than 1,300% increase from the week of April 5th, 2020. During the same period of time in 2019, pre-pandemic, taxis made around double number of trips, showing that there is still room for significant growth. In fact, there is more demand for TLC licensed transportation than the current taxi supply is meeting. Of the 13,587 licensed yellow taxis, approximately 6,600 are in storage, meaning they are not being operated on the streets. Of the medallions held by owner drivers, the, mass, the vast majority are on the road and providing passenger service. So the difference right now is that the individuals who own medallions that are non-fleets are the ones that are in large part operating. TLC is working with owners to get taxis out of storage and back on the road, picking up passengers to meet the growing demand for service. Importantly, the amount of money earned by taxis consistently operating on the road has significantly increased and is approaching pre-pandemic levels. Last month, the average fare box earnings for an active yellow taxi was $7,080 per month plus $1,133 in tips. A year ago, it was less than half of that. Taxis making over 25 trips a day are now bringing in an average of $10,019 a month, plus $1,710 in tips. Those are robust fare box earnings and indicate substantial recovery in the yellow taxi sector. In addition to the growth and demand driven by the recovery, the pause on new for hire vehicle licenses is also working to strengthen the taxi industry market share. Before the change in local law that empowered TLC to stop new for hire vehicles from flooding our streets, more than 2000 new cars went on the road every month, creating a race to the bottom for TLC licensed drivers and worsening traffic congestion. Since the cap was successfully implemented, TLC has seen the attrition of approximately 20, 25,000 for hire vehicles, meaning there are 25,000 less for hire vehicles than there were 20 months ago. We anticipate additional attrition over time, which we believe will help achieve a more equitable balance across all segments of the industry, including traditional livery and black car bases. While the taxi sector is rebounding in tandem with our city's recovery, too many taxi medallion owners have experienced financial distress. We are all aware that the industry has faced tragedy, technological change, disruption, and uncertainty over the past several years. The path of this reality was paved by those who did not act when market forces and bad actors took advantage of owner drivers and it pains me to see how ill-served they have been by a system that treated the medallion as a speculative asset. 
Today, a number of taxi owner drivers face unsustainable monthly loan payments. Solving this debt crisis is the single most important issue that we must resolve. Doing so will unlock our ability to take aggressive action to increase economic opportunity and quality of life for medallion owners. The TLC is working to determine the exact number of medallion owners who have debt, as well as to assess how much of this debt is unsustainable for each individual owner. As you know, the local law 111 of 2020 established the Office of Financial Stability to monitor and evaluate the financial stability of the medallion industry. Over the summer, the TLC released a survey to medallion owners in an effort to meet the requirement that any person who has an interest in medallion submit an annual financial disclosure. While these surveys are voluntary, they have given the TLC the opportunity to gather personal data that is not publicly available. As we continue to receive survey results, the TLC can rely on financial information received from those participating in the MRP for data on the scope of medallion debt. Since April 2021, approximately 1,000 medallion owners have applied for the MRP. The 90 medallion owners who were approved to receive grant money as of yesterday, October 7th, had a median original debt of around $400,000 with monthly payments of approximately $2,500. Through the medallion relief program, they were able to achieve a median average debt forgiveness of nearly $200,000 supported by monthly payments of $1,600 or less. These figures change daily as more loans are restructured. Through, through the distribution of uh, the MRP funds, the TLC will have a data-driven assessment of the true extent of the medallion debt for individual owners in New York City. Alleviating this debt is crucial to improving the health and longevity of the iconic New York City yellow taxi industry. I would also like to add that the 90 medallion owners who um, have been approved through the program have uh, achieved a total in $14 million of debt forgiveness and cancellation. So that is a, the multiplier effect of, of the grant program. The TLC Owner Driver Resource Center opened remotely during the pandemic uh, in the spring of 2020. Among other resources, the center is a space where owners and drivers can access free financial counseling and legal services related to medallion debt. This includes help with reviewing loan terms, renegotiating financial agreements, challenging debt collections or judgments, and filing for bankruptcy if appropriate, and halting back bankruptcies where appropriate. Lawyers from the New York Legal Assistance Group provide these free legal services at the center to all medallion owners who arrive there. Over a seven month period after the center opened, TLC learned that medallion owners working with the center and with means for a down payment for refinancing were able to achieve improved loan terms and better financial stability. TLC also learned that a number of medallion owners were unable to afford the down payment needed to refinance. During this time, TLC also engaged in numerous discussions about how to address the debt issue with the industry, stakeholders, including medallion owners, drivers, advocates, attorneys, and financial experts. Ultimately, the city secured $65 million and Mayor de Blasio and the TLC announced the MRP on March 9th, 2021. In the ensuing months, TLC published proposed rules outlining eligibility criteria for the MRP and held a public hearing and voted on the rules for the program. Additionally, TLC embarked on a procurement process and signed contract with Pursuit, a financial institution with rich experience with COVID-19 relief programs and lending to small businesses in September to distribute grants under the program. The MRP is designed to give individual medallion owners who have five or fewer medallions a critical tool to restructure loans, reduce principal on those loans, and lower monthly payments. 
As previously noted, over a thousand people have applied to participate in the MRP and are in various stages of debt restructuring. The Owner Driver Resource Center is working with these owners and approximately a dozen lenders to significantly reduce debt and loan payments and to achieve settlements where, where appropriate. The program provides a $20,000 grant to all participants to be used as a down payment to help restructure medallion related loans. In effect, we are recreating what we saw work for owners when the Owner Driver Resource Center was established. This $20,000 can mean hundreds of thousands of dollars off loan principal. Through the multiplier effect of the grant payments, a $65 million program can achieve as much as $500 million in debt forgiveness. Some medallion owners will reach settlements owing nothing, while others will attain over $100,000 in debt forgiveness. Furthermore, we are aware that the industry has not recovered to pre-pandemic levels, and owners may still need assistance keeping up even after substantially reduced payments. To help, the city is providing participating medallion owners with an additional $9,000 to cover loan payments. This means that if restructured, if a restructured loan monthly payment is $1,600 and with a medallion owner's contribution combined with the city's debt service assistance, the monthly payment for the first year will be $850 a month, uh, well under $1,000. TLC Medallion, the TLC Medallion Relief Program offers an owner driver first model that is tailored to the individual financial situations. It focuses on the owner drivers, not the fleets, and it takes into account the personal circumstances of each medallion owner through a client centered and holistic approach. Unfortunately, a one size fits all approach, even ones that sound good in theory cannot adequately account for the different circumstances of medallion owners. Additionally, the MRP allows the medallion to be valued based on the income it generates for owners. Price fixing the medallion value at an artificially low price, as has been suggested, treats the medallion as a speculative asset and deeply threatens its long-term value. We owe it to the hardworking owner drivers who have invested in their medallion to restore this asset rather than fix a set price, which would distort the market far into the future. Furthermore, proposals that call for a backstop for all medallion owner debt for 30 years would mean New York City taxpayers are assuming all risks for all borrowers and lenders. This is true regardless of whether the borrower is an individual owner driver or a large fleet owned by a multi-million dollar corporation, or if the lender is a large financial institution capable of covering its own losses, or was once the predatory lender that exploited medallion owners in the first place. That is unworkable. What is working is the MRP. And as I shared earlier, as of last night, 90 medallion owners have been approved for grants and will receive close to $14 million in debt forgiveness. Furthermore, over a thousand medallion owners and a dozen lenders are in various stages of working with the TLC Owner Driver Resource Center to restructure loans and lower monthly payments. If the need is there, we anticipate being able to help over 2,200 medallion owners, and we hope to allocate all $65 million in funding as soon as possible with a goal of reaching all applicants by the end of this calendar year. The yellow taxi is one of the most iconic symbols of New York City, and a healthy taxi industry is critical to the city's recovery. We are heartened to see the industry showing a lot of strength, with trip volumes and fare box earnings rising substantially during the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, beyond our work on the MRP, TLC has met with owners, drivers, and other industry stakeholders to develop a yellow taxi strategic plan, outlining recommendations for innovation and growth for the sector going forward. And of course, the MRP is up and running now, and it is delivering the relief that 
hardworking taxi medallion owners urgently need to achieve financial health and stability that they deserve. We owe it to them to ensure the medallions continue to be an important asset and an irreplaceable part of New York City's transportation network. And the MRP does just that. In addition to the TLC's work with the yellow taxis, we are also focused on supporting the traditional black car and livery sectors, a great conduit for us to identify best practices, new policies, and recommendations is through the black car and livery task force, which you are a member of Chair Rodriguez. The task force began meeting in June after the last member was appointed. As of today, the task force has two more scheduled meetings to discuss the recommendations that will be put forth in a public report. We hope to publish this report before the end of the year and look forward to continued collaboration with this committee regarding implementation. With those recommendations remain in development, we can share some preliminary themes that have come up during our meetings with the task force. These include issues related to pre-arrangement and payment, educating licensees and car services bases, enhancing regulation for leasing companies, coordinating across sectors on insurance and workers' compensation, the feasibility of internal and external advertising, increased use of wheelchair accessible and ba battery electric vehicles, and parity among the sectors, including with respect to inspections and vehicle retirement. The task force has also discussed unmet demand in the traditional black car and livery sectors and the potential for new FHB licenses to meet that need. We are reviewing this recommendation carefully since we must ensure that the city does not lose crucial gains we have made in reduced congestion, increased driver pay, and a more balanced number of vehicles across the sectors that the TLC regulates. Beyond our work with the task force, TLC is conducting a regulatory review a top to bottom review of all agency rules and regulations. We have received input from our licensees to identify ways to modernize, strengthen, streamline, and otherwise improve and update our rules and policies. TLC will also hold a public hearing this fall to gather additional input for our review. As always, we welcome ideas from the city council and on how we can improve operations and best support our licensees in the industry at large. So thank you again for the opportunity to speak at today's meeting. I'm happy to take questions and engage in, in a fruitful and productive discussion with you. Thank you. Thank you thank very you much. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Chair. That's okay. And I'll, I'll put it back to you. Um, Commissioner, your screen seems to be a bit narrowed. Is there any way to fix your camera? Are you unable to see me? We can see you, but it looks like you're in a circular uh, lens. Yeah, I don't know that I can. I can. I can adjust it. That's a that right there actually is a little better. As we can see you though, so perfect. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Sure. Um, at this time, Commissioner, if you could please stay unmuted if possible during the question and answer period. And I will now turn it back over to Chair Rodriguez for questions, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. I have many questions, but it, I'm gonna be asking it probably two or three first and then bringing back, calling back my colleagues that they have questions so that I will be back after. Uh, Commissioner, first of all, I appreciate uh, all the dedication that you have uh, trying to bring a solution to this crisis. And again, this is not personal at all for anyone. You know, I personally have been members of this committee since 2009, where I serve as a member up to 2003 and been chairing this committee from 2013 to today. So we know that we are today as a result of accumulation of many years where we have failed. And, 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 and I think that we got to the moment of this crisis uh, 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 where now we have the responsibility to think outside the box. Uh, we feel that the program, the MRP is a good start, but we don't think that this is enough. 
Uh, the uh, first question, do you have, uh, has OMB released all the $65 million to PLC uh, uh, at this moment? The full $65 million is allocated, correct. Okay. So, so what is the universe or how many of those uh, medallion owners you feel that PLC has a capacity to work, especially if you're aiming for whatever we can do from here to the end of this administration? So far, uh, based on the applicants to the program and our calculations on the potential number of medallion owners that need um, debt assistance, we feel that uh, the $65 million um, should be enough to cover that population based on our How data much? today. Okay. How many medallion owners do you think that can be covered and be, be able to be helped? As sure. a result of so that, that, that's a two part question. Um, if we look at the $65 million by the numbers, um, as I shared in, in my opening statement, that's enough to cover 2,250 uh, loans. Um, we have uh, 13,587 medallions. We have uh, roughly half of those medallions are owned by fleet owners and the other half is owned by individual owners. So the universe of individual owners is approximately 6,000 owners. Um, if we consider uh, that um, not every one of those 6,000 owners is holding um, debt, um, we can probably deduce that two thirds may be holding some debt. So approximately 3,400 medallion owners potentially have some level of debt associated with their medallion. And that debt can range anywhere from $1 to over a million dollars. Um, and so we think that the medallion fund is, is adequately sized when you, when you look and make considerations around those numbers. But how many individual medallion owners can get financial support under the MRP with those 65, 68 million dollars? Based on the data that we're seeing right now, we believe that every single medallion owner who is facing insolvency should be able to be helped through the $65 million fund. So we have a average of how many individual medallions on it do we have right now? 6,000, sir. 6,000. So you feel that with a $68 million, assuming that every single individual medallion owner is doing help, that $68 million will be enough to cover that universe? No, sir. We have 6,000 medallion owners, and not every single medallion owner is holding debt. We we know that there are several thousand medallion owners that do not have any debt associated with their medallions. And so what we approximate is that roughly two thirds of that universe may have debt. That does not mean that the two thirds of that universe is facing insolvency. The debt issue can range on an individual basis from $1 to over a million dollars. So on average, um, we believe that the 2,250 uh, loans that could be potentially serviced through the $65 million medallion relief program is sufficient for the universe of medallion owners who may be facing insolvency. This program is a structure to help individuals that own less than five medallions, right? Those are the par parameters, yes, sir. So whatever data we're looking at is based on, on working with that group. Uh, I, I just feel that, and again, we have to, I'm all about focusing on getting results. And that's why for me, I appreciate uh, all the hours and time that you've been putting uh, as a TLC commission to work on the yellow taxi crisis. And also we deliver a, 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 a black car task force and always being accessible to speak to them when it's needed. So I thanks and appreciate that. And I, I just feel that, I just hope that we can come to the table 
where we can bring the OMB director, city hall, you from as a commissioner, the stakeholder, you know, from the leaders of the taxes alliance, our office, and have a discussion with an open mind, uh, revising uh, the group pieces of the MRP and how also city hall should be having an open ear to also hear the other proposed that include an investment additional $93 million over the next 30 years. So again, I know even going after putting you on the spot, I just believe that, you know, it is a fair a call. A, the crisis is so big. Uh, this is the result of so many years where we have failed in the past uh, on the current and previous administration to the industry. And I feel that uh, beside what we can go over the details from your testimony, asking questions to you and hear from the literature today of the Taxes Alliance and the taxi drivers, I hope that we also can have a follow up having a round table conversation with all the stakeholders, having an open mind to go over the MRP, MRP program, but also being open to hear also the details of the proposal, asking City Hall to uh, invest the additional uh, $80, $93 million over the next 30 years, which means around like $3.2 million every year. So this is, yes, I want everyone to know that that's the most important thing that I want to bring to the table. Uh, we know that we can ask as many questions, but I also know that this crisis is being for so many years. I think that the MRP is a good beginning. I know that you have put up many hours, you have put your dedication here, but I also want to see how we can put a roundtable conversation. Will you be open to advocate and talk to the rest of your partners at City Hall to get that roundtable conversation happening? Hey, Chairman, you know that I'm always available and accessible. Everyone at the TLC is available and accessible. We're always happy to meet with all stakeholders um, to discuss the best interests of the industry. And I'm, I'm happy to continue to connect with all of you on same. I just add the other two pieces that the other uh, members of City Hall, including the OMB director, uh, should be asked to be there with us too. And again, I'm not putting on the spot to say yes or no because I know that you have to consult. But this is a recommendation that I personally have been making to City Hall. So as we will hold this hearing today, I think that, and hopefully we can make progress getting details from any questions. I, I also want to give a help so that for me, that roundtable conversation must happen because it, it, I think this is only a beginning. What happened with those individuals who own from five to 10 medallions? I know some of those who are struggling too, uh, who use the value of those medallions to buy a house and bank is looking at the house as a collector and be try to go after those properties too. So it, how can TLC identify way not to go. I think that those who own the 500 medallions, the 1,000 medallion at some point, they have all the investment, all the portfolio. And many of them, they are good investors. So not everyone are bad investors. Uh, but I feel that the financial crisis is not the same. And I think that the city is coming back after COVID. And we should also be able to bring the taxi industry back as we hopefully by next year we will be back as a city. So what is the plan to help those individuals who also own from five to 10 medallions? So the universe of, of individuals uh, that own um, more than five medallions is very small. Um, and so if anyone fits that dynamic, um, uh, is suffering or from ins or facing insolvency, they should reach out to us at the TLC so that we can evaluate uh, their their situation. Um, it, it, the, the good thing is that it's a finite group of people um, and, and the majority of those are corporations um, and not individuals. And I wanna just remind everyone that the MRP is very focused, laser focused on, on the individual medallion owner 
um, who, um, who, who is facing insolvency. Uh, but luckily, um, to your question, we have very few uh, medallion owners um, that are, have less than five. And as I said, if there is somebody who is facing insolvency, they should reach out to us so that we can evaluate uh, their case. But the program being structured to work and hope financially, provide financial assistance to medallion owners that own less than five medallions, right? It's, it's focused on individual medallion owners with a focus on owner drivers, the ones who are working in their cars every day and individual medallion owners that are not corporations. Um, and those, those um, entities that tend to have five medallions or more tend to be fleet companies and not individuals. But if there is a, let's give you an example, if there is um, um, a, a female medallion owner who um, had a family of, of taxi owners who now finds herself having inherited six medallions and is facing insolvency and wasn't an, a, a driver and it just has accumulated these assets and needs help, we will evaluate that case on an individual basis. So the MRP has maximum flexibility to help the, the small person, the individual medallion owner who needs assistance. And so if there's somebody who meets that, that, that sort of criterion that you've outlined, I would like for them to reach the TLC so that we can take a close look at their particular situation. Does the TLC support a city back guarantee program as a strategy to load the debt to no more than $145,000 and $800 per month? The TLC launched um, a, a $65 million program um, to help individual medallion owners to be able to restructure. And from what we are seeing right now, based on our data, um, uh, what we have launched is, is working um, and it, it is not necessary at this time um, to, to create um, an artificial price or to price fix the, the asset um, or to try to right size every single medallion owner into the same um, debt construct. Again, our medallion owners have varying levels of debt um, through the 90 uh, medallion owners who have already restructured the debt um, ranges, uh, the original debt ranges from $22,000 to $744,000. So I don't think that you or anyone might suggest that we make somebody who has less than $145,000 in debt to raise them to $145,000. So we have to look at all of these cases individually um, and refinance and restructure them individually. You know, there is a level of disconnection when it comes to, and again, I don't want to call it yes, as you or as I, when I address any agency about commission or any agency, but this is not level of cooperation. When recommend a specific recommendation came out from the Yellow Taxi Medallion Task Force and City Hall come hours before releasing a plan not engaging the city council into the discussion and thinking that we will be only weakness of a plan when there's other plan, other recommendation, I'm sorry, that have been putting on the table. And I know that you had to play your role as a commissioner, but city hall have failed or not engaging the council before they released this plan. And we are asking, demanding City Hall to come back to the table, to revise together this plan, and they propose to add an additional $93 million over the next 30 years. Cannot be wrong that all Congress members of New York City, Senator Schumer, and many other leaders are saying, we support a such initiative. I'm gonna leave it here. I'm gonna call the 
uh, now my other colleagues to ask questions. We're going to put in the time in five minutes, and after they finish, then I will come back to other questions. Thank you, Chair. Um, before we turn to council member questions, I would like to recognize that we have been joined by council member Levin. We will now call on council members for questions in the order they have used the Zoom raise hand function. Council members, please keep your questions to five minutes. The Sergeant at Arms will keep a timer and will let you know when your time is up. We will first hear from council member Holden, followed by council member Menchaca, followed by council member Brooks Powers. Council member Holden, you may begin when the Sergeant calls time. Starting time. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Commissioner. For, I know it's a it's a tough situation. Like you said, it's it's really based on an individual um, assessment, and and it's that's um, get, can get quite complicated because uh, obviously the different medallion owners are paying uh, different prices for obviously their loans. But um, on the average, what are, are the loans being reduced by? I, mean, I think you, you said there are 90, uh, 90 medallion owners have been helped so far. Yes, council member, uh, 90 medallion owners have been helped so far. The original uh, principal balance owed ranges uh, of the, for those 90s uh, between 22,000 and 744,000 and the outstanding principal uh, uh, percent reduction ranges from 10% for obviously the smaller um, principals owed to up to 77% in um, debt forgiveness. Um, and so the new um, principal owed after the restructure range um, from zero for settlements um, to under $300,000 uh, for the larger loans. And so, $14 million has been forgiven for that group of 90. Right. So um, generally, the, the 90 uh, medallion owners that were helped so far, did you speak to some of them or uh, any of them uh, about, you know, how was the process? How could it be improved? Uh, are, are they happy? Are they, will they be able to work with, with the um, restructuring? Did you, did you talk to any of them? We've, we've engaged with several with several of them um, and I, everyone that we have connected with of, of the individuals who have come through the resource center, they're all very um, um, uh, relieved and happy um, to be on, um, on this path um, and, and, and grateful. Okay, and uh, you mentioned the number of 2,300 medallion owners that you expect to help, is that, is that accurate? So we expect to help all individual medallion owners who need assistance, but because we have never been able to figure out what the debt issue is or what, um, what, how many medallion owners actually need assistance because that these were all private deals, um, right. there's no data on this. What we're seeing based on the intake um, and, and through smart mathematical assumptions is that you know we have 6,000 owners, not everybody's holding debt, and, um, and everybody that's holding debt is not insolvent. So we are assuming that 3,400 or so people, and that is at a high range, have some level of debt, um, and that about 2,250 of those may be facing insolvency. And as we move through the medallion relief program and have intake, we are getting data. And, and I, I, I think that a silver lining here is that at the end of this program, and as we move through the program, we will finally have answers on what the total debt issue is um, and, and how many medallion owners need help. And I think that um, I cannot wait until we get to that point so that we have something actual to fall back on um, in terms of what what was the impact of the shift in market share um, after the apps ascended. Yes, but it sounds like the city is coming back. And uh, like like you said in your testimony, that it looks like, you know, we, we're in for brighter days, at least uh, with, with uh, not only this, the MRP, but and, and helping the medallion drivers, but that we're getting more obviously um, 
more customers, right, for the medallions and and uh, and so forth. But my final question is step by step: How does staff at the Owner Driver Resource Center help participants navigate their medallion debt and receive funding through the MRP? So it's a it's a labor intensive process. Um, we have a website and or email address. Um, that every medallion owner who needs can visit. Um, it's available in all languages. Um, we schedule an intake appointment um, first to make sure that the medallion owner is a medallion owner and, um, and that they uh, have all their documents in order, including the loan documents. They are then paired um, with a financial and legal advisor from NILAG um, for free. All of these services are, are at no cost to the medallion owner. And then um, once all of the, um, I guess, financial assessments are done. Time expired. The, That's all right. You can continue. I, yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. The the attorneys and um, and the lenders get together with the borrowers uh, uh, and begin to negotiate um, uh, better terms. And once the uh, medallion owner um, is is comfortable, and we know that um, the new terms are financially viable from them and, and, and an agreement is executed. And then at the end of that agreement, um, which has to meet the parameters of the program to significantly reduce principal, to reduce the interest rates, to reduce the monthly payments and or entirely settle the debt, um, then, then things are, are, are finalized. And at the end of that, if the medallion owner is still holding um, debt which is significantly reduced in comparison to what they were holding originally, then we will help provide debt assistance if they need it to ensure that the monthly payments are manageable for the first year. Well, that sounds, uh, sounds interesting. Sounds like it's, um, you know, we, we can solve this problem. So I thank you, Commissioner. Thank you for your hard work and, and thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Holden. We will next hear from Council Member Minchaka followed by Council Member Brooks Powers. Council Member Menchaca, you may begin when the Sergeant calls time. Starting time. Thank you. And I wanna say thank you to the chair, the committee that's here listening, offering some new ideas and commissioner, thank you so much for your time tonight or today and the other uh, time where we spent an hour talking about all this. And I wanna do some follow-ups with you that really center us in the demographic that we're speaking to with I think some of the most need. And those are our aging medallion owners and immigrant with some kind of immigrant experience. And so to get a sense from you, if you have done the research, any older, elder uh, immigrant owners and drivers that we're talking about in your analysis. So we, as we move through the applicants, we are um, flagging and looking for our older medallion owners that are 65 years old or older. We understand that they have circumstances that are very different than somebody who is uh, a 30 year old driver or a 40 year old driver or a 50 year old driver. Um, and we wanna make sure that they are taken care of and get the attention um, and the supports that they need. Um, and for instance, uh, two weeks ago, I had um, a, an elder medallion owner who owed about $25,000 um, in his, his debt um, total. And we're working actively working with him and his lender um, to reach a settlement so that he doesn't owe any more money at the end of his um, restructure. Uh, so we're very, very committed and focused. We will not forget about our older um, medallion owners who have devoted their livelihoods um, to this work. They will not be left behind. Awesome. I, I should have started with, I know that you are committed to them. My, my question was number. Um, how many are we talking about in anticipation? And is that something that you have data around and or are collecting? That is information that we're, we're collecting. We're, we're isolating um, the medallion owners who, who are coming to us who are of an age older than 65, and we will have that data in time. 
Um, but the, the overall population of our licensees that are older than 65 is, is quite large. Um, but we don't know just yet how many of those are medallion owners who are facing insolvency. We will learn that in time. Okay. Uh, so that's a big flag that I raised last time. And I, I just want to raise it here for, for this committee and as we move forward. The, the second area is really that just has continued to come to light. Yesterday, we, we even heard the protests, the kind of ever-growing and everlasting protests that's outside City Hall while we were at Stated. And uh, I think some of us engaged them. And I think there's a real problem here that we're not talking about that's beyond the MRP plan that you are here to push uh, and get support for. But the, the fact that there's just a lack of trust with this community, and when I engaged them with new information that I had from you, it was just clear that it didn't matter what the program is. The, the kind of classic misstep of the de Blasio administration across the board, like this is just how de Blasio has run his administration for the last eight years, is... You know, if you build something for us, without us, it's not for us. And that's just classic. That's just like his DNA that has seeped into all agency operations, especially this one. So how do you, how do you plan to confront that? Because I believe that what you have created is good for many, not all, many of the drivers, but they will never come to you the way that you have asked and need them to come to the table to negotiate and sit down. That's, that's the poison pill here. And I'm just realizing how much that's the biggest issue. You can, you can kind of uh, tout the, the, the procedural and access to the 60 some million dollars left, but that, how do you get across that? How, do you, how are you planning to confront that? directly i think that we have to continue to build bridges and trust and i think that as this program um continues to provide debt Time relief, for, mm. debt finish, relief finish, for, please finish answer um as the program continues um to ramp up and and provide relief i am confident that more people uh will come forth or that everybody who needs to come forth will come forth. I think that is evidence in the thousand um, individuals who have already applied uh, for, for the program um, and anyone else who, who needs, we're here and we're available. And I will not stop until um, we have exhausted all of our outreach um, abilities. Okay, uh, Chair, can I ask one more question? Yes. Okay, just the last question. I'm actually walking to Senator Schumer's house. We have a big uh, protest and rally in support of immigration reform, but uh, Schumer has supported the opp opposition plan and he's not alone. Uh, it was mentioned earlier today. What, what, what is that worth in this conversation to really force the mayor to, to force the city to sit down and come up with an alternative plan to, point, to the point that the chair made like, is that worth anything to, to offer something that looks more like what they're offering? And, and is that something that can be part of these negotiations as you move forward? I think a gesture in that way will help build the trust that you need uh, to build something that they help create with their DNA. Um, so yeah, what's, what's, what is it worth that all these other elected officials have signed on to this alternative plan? And I mean, if they're wrong, then I think now is the time to hear that all those elected officials that signed on are wrong and why they're wrong so that we can take that back and we're engaging uh, NYQA and, and medallion owners. No, I'm really glad that you that you brought this up, Council Member. Um, it is critical that we all acknowledge um, that everyone is coming from a place of wanting to provide medallion owners and drivers with financial relief supports. Um, and I think that we can all agree that there are multiple ways to solve the debt issue. Um, and, and 
and I think that we we you know as a I, I, I just on a on a personal note as a as a daughter and as a parent I, I've always been taught um, and teach that we can disagree and still be friends and still be productive um, and and the congressional delegation wants to ensure that we are providing medallion owners with the relief that they need. Um, and we believe that the MRP is providing that. Um, what the congressional um, letter said was that they would like a guarantee uh, of medallion loans in exchange for firm commitments from the le lenders to restructure medallion loans to a viable market of the, of the value of the medallions. Um, and the city's plan achieves commitments from the lenders to restructure the medallion loans without a guarantee. Um, and the delegation is asking that the city provide owners um, um, the needed resources to restructure their medallion lo loans, and the city's plan is achieving that. Um, and, and if I may suggest, what we really need um, now from the congressional delegation is to help advance Congressman Meek's bill to exclude debt relief from gross taxable income. That's the next hurdle um, in this debt forgiveness and cancellation um, process, regardless of the plan. Um, and, and we need to make sure that we continue today, regardless of what happens, may or may not happen in the future, our program is up and running right now. We have 90 people that got help over the last 14 days. We want to get to the 1,000 people before the end of the year, and we cannot delay. We cannot stop. We cannot halt. We have to get the money out because these people need help right now today. And then once they are restructured, we want to make sure that they have the protection from the federal government around taxation. Um, and so if if, if you can you know, support that in your conversations um, with the delegation, I would be much obliged. Thank, thank you, council member. Thank you. Thank you, thank Chair. You. And, and Jessica, before, before uh, calling the next council member. Please. Uh, com Commissioner, uh, we definitely, you know, when you look at the number, as you say, how many, how many at some point we have 15,000 medallions in the in the street, how many of those fifteen thousand are now held by PLC because you know we have not been able to sell it? Some body, people are returning from those fifteen thousand. How many are under TLC? Chairman, I just want to clarify that the TLC um, by by law only has thirteen thousand five hundred and eighty seven medallions. Um, How many? 13,000? 13,587 medallions. Half of those medallions are owned by fleets. Half of the medallions are owned by individuals. Okay. So, so, so you keep saying, you know, how difficult it is from TLC to, you know, there's some data that you don't have it yet because, not because of lack of effort, not because of lack of staff, but because, you know, and their relationship basically with the private sector, the bank. But we are talking about then, well, like 63,000 are individual medallion owners. What are the exact numbers of medallion or individual medallion owners? It's approximately 6,000, sir. Well, are, are you asking a question about storage numbers or are you trying to um, ascertain the the number of medallion owners who are holding debt and and what and a pot and the population of those who are holding debt that are facing insolvency is that what you're asking no first first the total you say that by law right now TLC has 13,587 and half of them are individual medallion owners so it means that there's if we divide it split by half this is like almost 6,300 individual medallion owners. In There's roughly 6,000 individual medallion owners. Again, Commissioner, I'm following what you say. TLC- I, I just wanna make sure I'm following what you're saying. I wanna make sure that I answer your questions. Okay, you just say TLC, no you TLC, you just say by law there are 13,587 medallions. And you say 
half of them are individual medallion owners. Is that the case or is different? Roughly half of the fleet is owned by individual medallion owners. That is okay, the case. So if, if, if it's half from 13,587, then it's not yet 6,000. It's like 6,260. We're saying roughly half are. And, and what I shared is that we have 6,000, around 6,000 individual medallion owners. That's the number, 6,000. But is, is that by law that half of them must be individual medallion owners? No, sir, it's just a construct. Half of the medallions are owned by fleet and half of them are owned by individuals. That's, exactly. that's even and, the evolution of the industry. Okay, Commissioner, and half of 13,587 is not 6,000. It's more than 6,250. So more precisely, sir, half, more precisely, we have approximately 6,000 medallion, individual medallion owners. So I wanna clarify on the record for you that roughly 6,000 medallions are owned by individuals. Okay, let's use including your work. Let, let's uh, quote what you said. Uh, there's 13,587, half of them are individual medallion owners. How do you come out to the conclusion that only 3,250 will be the average number that will need help from the financial relief program. I see where you're asking now. So I'm going to, I, I will try to explain this again. And, and just to clarify, I think you, you, you may be familiar in your tenure, which is far longer exceeds me, um, that by law, it used to be a 60-40 mix, um, but that was no longer the case. Now, let's, let's try this again. We have 13,587 medallions. Roughly 6,000 of those are owned by individuals. We know that we have several thousand medallion owners, individual medallion owners, who don't have any debt. So based on, on do, that do, do, analysis- Do we have a number? Do, does DSC have the number of how many doesn't have any debt? Roughly, roughly 2,000 or so do not have any debt. And we're gathering yeah. that information as we move through the medallion relief program. The most, the, the, the very critical thing to, to understand here um, and that needs to be articulated is that debt um, around medallions were all done as private transactions. And for a very long time until now, we have not had a mechanism for tracking individual private transactions and understanding exactly what each individual medallion owner has done with their medallions. Thank, thankfully, through the city council, um, we have established an office of financial stability whereby medallion owners now have to submit financial documents to the TLC. And in time, we will have all the data points that you are asking whether we have or not. We have a lot more data now than we did before. We have a lot more data since March 9th than we have ever had before. I, ha um, I have a question. Will, and we question. will get that information for you. I have no question that we've been able to collect more data. The council has played an important role, passing many, many law mandating TLC to work around those data collections. So I know that we've been working together between the council and city hall to move the agency to be what it is still a lot more work has to be done. Agreed. And, 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 and I just say that, you know, it's like, this is not about, you know, what anyone, regardless of the role that you can have, that I have, that anyone have a city hall from the Mayon Dow Boyer director, we can be thinking about a crisis that is affecting so much this industry can be a structure only to hold with $65 million, a average of, 3,250 250 individuals. And we will not come out with a solution right now because there's a different approach. And City Hall has never engaged the council before this plan was released, except a few hours before it went out. So I go back to my council knowing that they, if we want to be closer, we have to sit on the table. The next council member that has questions, Jessica, please. Thank you, Chair. The next council member to, to be called on will be council member Brooks Powers, followed by council member Levin, followed 
by Council Member Miller. Council Member Brooks Powers, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Thank you, and thank you, Commissioner, for uh, your testimony today. Um, just a couple of questions, just in the interest of time, I'll ask all my questions and wait for your response. And so um, I know that we were talking also about the, the average debt for the, the owner drivers, which I think is largely believed to be $500,000. And in the plan, I'm just curious to understand how was a livable wage factored into that plan? Um, how, how was it rather accounted for? Uh, also, I would like to know, um, the city comptroller has stated about the proposal by the New York Taxi Workers Alliance is fiscally sound. I'm interested in understanding why TLC continues to say that it's not feasible. Also would like to know how lenders have reacted to the MRP. And um, just in terms of the type of outreach that's being done to the, the TLC, the, the owner drivers, how is TLC like really doing a grassroots operation to make sure that they understand that there is a resource center and the type of services that are being offered? We know that a large um, population in terms of the livery drivers are um, individuals of color who are immigrants. Um, they are head of households in many instances homeowners here in communities like the one that I represent. And so um, just wanting to know that the agency is thinking outside of the box and really working in overdrive to making sure that they're addressing language barriers and connecting um, the, the impacted owners to these resources that are being offered through your agency. So thank you. Those are my questions, Commissioner. I think you're on mute. Yeah, first I, I was, sorry, I was I was typing um, your questions because I want to make sure I, I don't miss any of them. I appreciate your your very thoughtful questions. Um, uh, I'll knock out the less complicated answers um, out of the way now. Um, all the lenders um, that we are aware of that have. Um, uh, that our medallion owners have loans with are at the table. Um, I have not heard from a single lender that they are not interested or willing to participate in our program. Um, and that is, you know, very, very critical to the success. Um, and of the 90 uh, um, um, restructures that we've done over the last couple of weeks, we have a good mix of the dozen of lenders um, that uh, have, uh, um, uh, that our medallion owners have loans with. Um, so again, I'm not aware of any lenders who are who are not participating in, in the MRP. Um, uh, everybody is, is very committed to moving away from this debt issue for a variety of reasons. Obviously for the medallion owners um, to be in a healthier financial situation, it is critical, but the industry needs for this debt issue to be resolved so that we can attract new capital, uh, focus on rebranding the yellows and, and move forward um, without the um, without the negative risk profile that the uh, that the industry or the sector has right now, um, in terms of um, the conditions for uh, for livable wages and earnings, there the conditions are far superior now than they have been um, in the past uh, 20, 20 months. Um, the fare box is the big indicator of what is possible. Um, and as I said, right now, we're seeing on average $7,000 to $10,000 um, plus tips um, being generated um, by the fare box. Our medallion owners who are driving are getting 30, 30 to 40 trips a shift. Um, just for perspective, 18 months ago, that was 11 
um, rides per shift. There was a huge disproportion um, in the industry that was caused by the influx of vehicles. We have um, the cap, thank goodness, in place, um, and we have seen an attrition of vehicles and all of those things combined. Um, and with the huge reduction in debt that we will achieve through the MRP, um, we are in a much better place for, for um, our owners to be able to make not just a livable wage, but get on the path to being able to save money um, and, and not be burdened um, by unmanageable debt. Chair, I just asked if we could just have a few more moments just to, to get the rest of the response. One, I know. One, yes, uh, Commissioner, you can, you can finish it, your answer. Thank you. Um, with respect to outreach, we have um, uh, continued and will continue to em employ um, uh, a variety of communication methods for uh, medallion owners. We email, um, we have emailed all of our medallion owners about the resource center and the MRP. We have held um, webinars specifically for medallion owners. We've done them on a borough level and an individual level. Um, we have uh, calling trees where we have reached out to medallion owners whom we haven't heard from. Um, we want to make sure that we capture the entire um, universe. Um, and, and any suggestions that anyone may have with um, how we can do better outreach, we're open to that and willing to try things. Um, there are some um, um, council members who we will be partnering with to come to their district to get the word out. Um, um, uh, but we have, we've done, um, I, I think pretty well, we've reached a thousand people, um, and, and they're there, um, uh, and coming to the resource center. And we, as I said, we will not rest until we reach everyone who needs assistance. And, and just, I'm sorry, chair, just one follow-up question if I can. Chair. Yes, you may you may ask a question. Thank you. Um, and Commissioner, I know you mentioned in terms of um, the fare box and the increase. Do you think that's due to right now the reduction of cars that's um, on the road in terms of the competition of, of um, the drivers right now? And that after the pandemic has kind of um, moved and run its course and things continue to open up that that could change? And if so, like what would that impact be? I think that um, that right now we have what we're seeing is a sufficient amount of supply for the demand. And as the city continues to reopen and the passenger um, uh, ridership or the transportation needs continue to grow for the city, and we've seen consistent growth since the quarantine last year, that the numbers will continue to to to, to go up. So we don't we we are not anticipating. Um, uh, a downshift. If anything, we're expecting um, to get back to the million rides a day that we that we had before um, the, the pandemic. Um, and again, the conditions for market for more market share for the yellow taxis is is is, um, is better than it has been um, uh, since the onset of of the apps. Um, and so there's more market share for yellow taxis. So we don't anticipate a, a loss of market share. We're anticipating an increase in market share. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, colleague. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. We will next hear from Council Member Levin, followed by Council Member Miller. Council Member Levin, please begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Thank you very much and thank you commissioner um, for your testimony today and chair for conducting this hearing um <clears throat> commissioner, i want to ask um specifically the the um the letter from our congressional partners um uh to i think mayor de blasio uh, regarding these matters <clears throat> the other day um <clears throat> specified uh, the idea of the city providing some sort of uh, guarantee on the loans or kind of a backstop. So the idea being that um, if the city were to say that to the lenders that they would um, 
uh, guarantee the loan at whatever value, $150,000, for example. Um, if in the case that a, um, that a borrower defaults, um, that that guarantee has some um, value um, in the equation with with between the it, within the the on the loan terms uh, to work in the borrower's favor to um, make for more favorable loan terms um, or drive down um, that negotiated principle um, that is um, that is that is is happening anyway. So, for example, if somebody's loan uh, goes currently under the under uh, the MRP is going four hundred thousand two eighty five, um, and a guarantee, um, this kind of backstop would um, uh, could help bring that further down to say two twenty five or something along those lines. Um, why not do that? Because this was a recommendation that you know I spent a lot of time on this issue in the in in a, a task force that we did at the council, working with uh, you know pretty much every um you know in my working group, and we had a, a pretty much every perspective on this question represented in that working group. We met many hours, and so this was one of our recommendations. Um, why not do that? You know, that, that, that's an assumption um, that, that has not been, um, that has not been tested. Um, and the medallion relief program is modeled after um, a, a tried and tested process that we have seen has worked. Um, prior to the MRP being launched, we had um, several, uh, about a hundred or more medallion owners renegotiate um, their their loans in, independently um, and they were able to achieve a you know a 200 million dollar uh, write-off in that in that tranche we know that um, providing um, the down payment for restructure achieves all of the things that we have all been speaking about achieving lower principal amounts owed per the medallion owner lower monthly payments close to or under $1,000 and lower interest rates and fuller amortization schedules. Um, and, and, and um, you know, we, we, we're happy to continue the, the conversation, but we also, you know, we, we, would, we would appreciate it as well um, if consideration could be given um, to, the, to the MRP. I don't know that the task force um, considered uh, the the program that is underway right now um, that is tried um, and tested and and that is what is available um, to the medallion owners right now today we are providing funds um, and I really think that we should be talking about the existing program and how to reach the thousand people that we need to get to before the end of the year we know it works it's worked for the people that came before the program was fully um, established. We know that it's working for the 90 people who have gotten $14 million um, in debt forgiveness. And we know that we can achieve up to 500 million in debt forgiveness um, through this program. No, I, I hear that. And I'm just, I'm just trying to think through if, if there's, and, and I, I appreciate the kind of the, the constraints with, under which the program is working. The TLC can't, unilaterally um, uh, offer a um, you know a, a, a guarantee behind the loans um, I think that um, and and then and, and frankly you're working within rules promulgated on this program that don't include such a guarantee and so and you're and you're issuing loans or you're issuing um, you know the down payments to renegotiate the loans now so you know the, the so so i i appreciate all those limitations i, I acknowledge that and when we did our our task force it was prior to the mrp um so it was you know this was we were we were talking through any options that we 
thought available. Um, some of which are similar or analogous to what the MRP is doing. There's a we we had thought of uh, uh, including a CDFI, and and um, the MRP is using a CDFI. So, um, I. I just I, it's it, it just struck me that if that's if that's the request that's being put forward and uh, and is being put forward by our colleagues in Congress um, uh, as well, um, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of the, the, one of the reasons why I was in a healing idea in the first place. I mean, this is an idea that I've been thinking about for a number of years now. It it. Um, it it kind of has the ability of it's it, it, it's a it's a set aside. I mean, the city has to be prepared for the liability of 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 every single loan defaulting, right? So, because if you're going to guarantee every loan uh, to a certain price, then you have to, um, you know, you have to be at least theoretically prepared to pay out on on all of those guarantees. That said. That said, if you're driving down the principles on these loans, combined with an increase in the value that we're seeing now of the medallions, I don't know if they're not going to increase to a million dollars. Um, we all know that, but they're go they're stabilized for all the reasons that you spoke about and all the work that you're doing at TLC to stabilize those those medallion values. Um, you know. As those medallion values are stabilized and the loan principles that are on these existing loans are driven down further or the terms get better, or the interest rates go down based on, you know, it can be, can be that those benefits could be increased and further leveraged by a guarantee. It, it, the, the risk of default goes down. Um, because the, because they're they're now have this asset the borrower has the asset and is paying a lower principal on it and so it's uh, while the asset is actually you know stabilized so um, it's just I, I think that it's it's worth kind of considering now I don't I don't really have the answers to how that um, framework or this tool would fit into the existing program. Like, I don't know the answer to that because the existing program is subject to its current rules. As you've said, you're looking to, to basically complete complete the program by the end of the year. So so that is a very tight time frame. Um, it's just I, I you know as I've I met with you last earlier this week. I've spoken to um, uh, uh, offices of members of Congress. Spoken to Taxi Workers Alliance. It's, 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 um, it's just, I think, worth considering if and how uh, this tool could be leveraged. Because while it is a, a liability, a very large liability, the, the risk itself of, of, of having to pay out that liability is very low. Uh, and I think, like you know, that's a pretty reasonable. I'm not an actuary, so I don't know how to gauge that. But um, you know, it seems to me logical that the, that that risk is low of default because people will want to hold on to their asset, their asset that's now stabilized. Uh, I'll turn it back over to the chair. Okay, thank you, thank you, uh, Council Member. I know that as you are elaborating more, you know, based on conversation that we have as you and I were the co-chair of the Yellow Taxi yeah. a, a Task Force. And, and as, as you heard before, you know, re-elaborating that besides this hearing today, we need to sit down at City Hall with the commissioner, with the OMB director, with the stakeholder to look on how this program is working, but also to be open to the proposal on coming out from the Riders Alliance, from the Taxis Alliance. A, a calling for City Hall to add an additional $93 million for the next 30 years. So I feel that, you know, uh, it's important to hear, to have this hearing, to have this conversation, but I, I think that we need to also keep moving forward, keep planning, and the best way to do it, as I mentioned before, I also have a City Hall that we need to get time to sit down in a round table at City Hall 
with the commissioner, with the OMB, with the right, with the tax alliance and all the stakeholder with an open mind to see what is working with this program, but also to be open to see how all the thing, what other thing we can do. There's a, a this crisis, as I said before, is too big, too long. This is a good initiative, but we believe that we can do more. So thank you, Councilman. Thank Jessica. you, Chair. Uh, uh, Chair, I just I do want to just acknowledge the all the work that um, that the commissioner and her staff have have done in, in creating this plan. I, I I don't want that to go unremarked upon. This is th this effort has been um, uh, very massive and has has uh, is is. Uh, very much working in, in the right um, in the right direction. And so I just yeah. wanted to make sure I acknowledge that. And, and I agree you. with you. And that has been my point from the beginning that I know how in this hearing say that program is not working. And we had to start in zero. For me, this is about, this is a good beginning, but we should be open to, for the other ideas on how to make it better. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council Member 11. We will now call on Council Member Miller Council Member Miller, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, uh, Commissioner. Um, so uh, just a, a point of clarity on a couple of issues. My, the, the chair and my, and my colleagues have had really good questions around this issue. Could you confirm that the average debt, uh, as was mentioned by my, my, my colleague, was 500000 Is that accurate for individuals? That's that, that's a number that's been um, stated um, uh, a lot. Um, that is not what we are seeing right now from the um, applicants that have come in that we're helping. We're seeing the latest average around 350K uh, with a median of 415. Uh, but the latest average is, is, is well under 500 at, at 350K. Um, again, we haven't um, closed deals for the full list of people that have come through, so that that can shift. Um, but mm -hmm. right now, from that first group, it's it's thankfully is far lower um, than than five hundred thousand dollars. That's that's good and welcome and, news. And could you could you just without really expanding in a very little bit of a limited time, uh, could you give me a number of of lenders that exist within the industry? Uh, is there, could you just give me an average no, uh, number of the lenders that exist? It's about a dozen. It's about 12 dozen. The, 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 it's, it's a small world. Okay, right. So, so it's a small world. And so uh, really securing this relationship or having a relationship with, with these lenders uh, to work with them to uh, make the adjustments to, to uh, mortgages uh, and negotiate new, new, new rates. Uh, is more manageable than a larger universe. Um, I had this experience in dealing with the council's uh, distressed mortgage buyback program uh, for the many, many uh, 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 HUD and Fannie Mae owned uh, distressed mortgages. And, and so I don't know if you are familiar with that, um, but the city actually, uh, along with not-for-profit, holds those mortgages uh, and, and uh, negotiated more favorable, favorable terms themselves. So I would say that what they're suggesting is not unlike in terms of guaranteeing and, and, and holding the mortgages a uh, lot different uh, because the debt uh, doesn't seem to be as high. That being said, uh, to return the debt, um, what is, and, and you said that the, the uh, average number of trips have gone up. So we're trying to kind of uh, and we we're talking about living wages, what is necessary in order for to the drivers to uh, and own operators to achieve um, living wages. Um, ha have you calculated the uh, uh, amount of trips? You said it's uh, up to uh, about 40 trips per day. Uh, what, how many trips would it be, uh, would be necessary uh, to meet the goal of the average debt, even by your standards? So the, the revenue that is that we're seeing being generated now is um, on par with the heydays um, of, of the industry where when there were no concerns 
um, around um, debt and um, and, uh, and and revenue. Um, and what we need to work on is to ensure that that continues through our cap, um, through through better regulation uh, of the industry. Uh, what we need to really be focused on, in addition to lowering the debt, is to ensure that there is appropriate market share for the medallion owners, um, and not just the medallion owners who are who are holding debt. We have you know 13,587 medallions. And we want to make sure that the entire industry is viable, that it has a secure future in New York City, um, and that they have an opportunity not just to um, have market share, but to recapture the market share that they are entitled to and that they once had in New York City. And that is the goal that we all need to work towards collectively. And we cannot do that and ensure that until we resolve the debt issue. Okay, so so certainly because we, we want to make sure that we, we've seen drivers, workers, and so many folks in, in, in many different uh, industries around the city uh, really uh, almost the, the ultimate canary in the coal mine in terms of the amount of hours that folks are actually put behind the wheel and in and, and, uh, different professions in order to have a, a time expired in certain standards. So, you know, uh, certainly we, we want to ensure that whatever we're doing ensures that people aren't uh, required to work uh, 12 hours a day, seven days a week in order to have this, to pay debt and have, have a quality of life as well. So to get us there, um, certainly uh, uh, we, we would like to see what those numbers are uh, as, as well as, and, I, and, and finally, um, we, we, we know that there was a congressional letter of support that, that was sent. Uh, was that letter uh, based on uh, uh, financial support? This was stimulus, stimulus that had already been earmarked or identified for transportation or specifically for this particular industry? Because uh, certainly there's some, some cost associated with this. There's obviously been an 800 pound ele uh, elephant in the room that no one has really talked about whether or not this is viable, if in fact it is not, um, or whatever the city's contention is, would the additional support from the federal government uh, kind of help us then? I'm, I'm reviewing the, the letter and I, it does not state um, uh, where the funding should, should come from. That Thank being you. said, does, is it the contention that the city has exhausted all its financial means in the 65 million? That is not a question that I have, have um, the expertise or ability to answer. Um, however, I, I can say that based on the conversation that we've been having and all the analysis that the economists have done for the city, that the $65 million should, re, should cover restructurings and settlements for all the medallion owners, um, uh, the individual medallion owners that have need. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, Jessica, I don't see another council member. Oh, Chair, I'll turn it back to you if you have any additional questions for the commissioner. Okay, thank you. Commissioner, let's just keep working together. You know, uh, uh, a lot of work to be done. I, again, I say as a beginning, but definitely we need to follow up with a more, with another meeting. So hoping we can coordinate it with you and City Hall to see that meeting happen and be able to go after, you know, with details about your plan. We want every any plan that can help the taxi a medallion owner to be successful. And, and that's our responsibility. So thank you for your service. And now we're gonna be going to the public. Uh, the first panel, that will be composed by the leadership of the uh, Vera V and other, and Jessica, we call them. We will give them 15 minutes uh, so that they can speak mainly on behalf of uh, all that uh, taxis and, and the great group of men and women that have been holding the protest and rally uh, uh, in front of City Hall, raising their voice, speaking on their behalf and the behalf of the family in the city. Uh, but after we give them the 15 minutes, 
Uh, and I hope that the commissioner can stay around at least for that portion so that she can hear directly from them. And after that, we're gonna be calling other taxi individuals since we're giving the 15 minutes to the leadership department, we're gonna be giving one minute to the second part of the public. And we hope that we're gonna be very tight, being sure that everyone stay with the one minute. So now I turn it back to our lawyer, Jessica. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, as the Chair just mentioned, we will begin with a panel comprised of Beta V. Desai from the New York Taxi Workers Alliance and Richard Chow, and they will be given 15 minutes to for their testimony. Ms. Desai, Mr. Chow, you may begin when the Sergeant calls time. Starting time. Okay, thank you so much. Good afternoon, and my name is Beta V. Desai. I'm the Executive Director of the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. Thank you so much, Chairman Rodriguez and members of the Transportation Committee for holding this hearing. Oh, I'm trying to struggle with where to begin. Um, I am a bit shocked by some of the information that I just heard from the chairwoman. First of all, this is the first time the TLCs admitted that they only have money to help 2,250 individuals in need. Now, they've said that they've used smart math to determine that that's the total number of people that need help. At the same time, the chairwoman have said, has said that they are basically gathering data as they go along. So they really don't know. And we're talking about an issue where thousands of people are struggling with lifetime debt and poverty. People facing bankruptcy, the risk of losing their homes, having their wages garnished. This is a serious issue. We've had driver suicides over this issue. We have seen so many families that have had early death with drivers that have passed away from heart attacks and strokes from the tension of this crisis. And to hear the TLC say to a community of 6,000 families that they basically have only budgeted money to help 2,250 of them is uh, beyond shocking for me. And by the way, when we raised this point six months ago, we kept hearing that, no, we're going to be able to, you know, everyone's going to get helped, which again, you heard that today. And I don't know what that means. It, you know, when you say everyone's going to get help, but oh yeah, the numbers only add up to helping 2250. So basically what you're saying is you actually believe only 2250 out of a universe of 6,000, a broader universe of 13,000 are in a crisis a crisis that's this deep of this level that is so shockingly out of touch for me to hear. The second thing, and to council members who have raised the question about a living wage, let's dissect the TLC's numbers together. The TLC chairwoman has said, and uh, this is not the heyday of taxis, by the way, to assert that they're grossing 7,000 a month. That would mean for the year, you know, at 84,000 a year, gross would basically mean $300 gross per shift, okay? So $300 per shift gross after your annual expenses of, you know, liability, you know, vehicle payments, the taxes, surcharges, gasoline, credit card processing, all of that, you're going to be left with less than $11 an hour working 60 hours a week throughout the entire year if your mortgage is 1200 a month. If your mortgage is 1600 a month, which is what the TLC is saying will be the average mortgage, you're going to be left with earning $9 an hour. If your mortgage now is up to $2,000 a month, because while the TLC has said mortgages will be on average $1,600, their own rules allow the lenders to go up to even $2,000 in order to be eligible for the lender to get the 20,000 cash down payment. 
And we know the TLC itself knows that these numbers are unsustainable for drivers. That's why in their program, the second half of the program is a subsidy, a $9,000 subsidy, which sure sounds so, you know, sounds so gracious that for six months or up to a year, they're going to allow you $9,000 that you can spend to subsidize your mortgage. But for a working person, for a driver, what that means is they're saying they're going to leave you with the mortgage that you're going to need help to pay. And they're going to give you that help for six to six months to a year. And then after that, sayonara, you're on your own. That's a bridge to bankruptcy. And the biggest lender in the industry, as the TLC well knows, has said that they're going to lower the debts to $275,000 across the board. For anybody who's above $300,000, you get a $20,000 cash down payment from the TLC grant program. Your debt will be lowered to $275,000. That will still be lifetime debt in a market where the value is around $100,000. You know, um, and, and, and we've also heard that if the $20,000 doesn't work enough for you to restructure your debt, then they're going to find other means. Let me tell you what those other means are from the conversations our members have had with the TLC's driver resource program. The other means are basically bankruptcy. And the whole purpose of this program is to help people avoid bankruptcy. We are not looking to lower debt. So when you get into bankruptcy, you have a lower liability. That does not qualitatively change people's lives. We are trying to avoid bankruptcy, avoid foreclosure, avoid a need for subsidy. Because when you work 60 hours a week, you should have a dignified living where you don't need a subsidy for your medallion payment or for your groceries and rent. But this program right now is going to leave a large number of drivers dependent on that kind of a subsidy. I'm also really shocked to hear the TLC chairwoman say that, um, that the, I, the concept of the guarantee is not tested, but that their concept of the $20,000 cash down payment was quote unquote tested. So let's talk about what that test was. You can go back to the newspapers from September 2020 when Marblegate, the largest holder of loans in the industry, talked about um, having drivers give a $25,000 cash down payment and using that to restructure loans to, you guessed it, $275,000 at an average of $1,600 a month. So the reason this is shocking to me is I would really like to know, did the TLC come up with that structure for Marblegate a year ago and we're just now hearing about it? Or does the, does the TLC consider Marblegate a private entity's restructuring practice to be a test for a public program? I think, you know, we, we wanna know that answer. But, you know, the most important question here to us is if this entire city, we're so thankful to the congressional delegation, to the medallion task force, if this, if this city, is dedicated and actually committed to finding a final resolution, then we need one that can stand the test of will drivers be able to avoid bankruptcy and avoid poverty pay? That is the test. A mortgage of 1,200, 1,600, 2,000 is going to leave workers under the minimum wage. And it's the same agency that has a rule that we fought for that established a minimum wage standard for Uber and Lyft drivers is now going to allow for owner drivers to be at a standard below minimum wage. This is a contradiction, a hypocrisy that is, is just immoral and you know possibly unlawful, by the way. Um, our program, our proposal 
it is not such a novel radical idea as you know councilman levin and councilman rodriguez have said the medallion task force talked about this and what we're saying, you know, the controller has has vetted it, found it to be fiscally sound. The entire congressional delegation, as well as the majority leader, do you, does anyone out there think these are offices that would not have vetted a proposal before endorsing it? We we are not exactly, you know, a powerhouse like political army here. There. This was not done as some sort of a favor. This was done after serious individuals vetting a proposal, looking at the numbers, looking at the letters that say that, you know, that the drivers are only that are going to get an offer of $275,000. Now, I understand that the TLC seems to think that that is okay. They think that $1,600, even $2,000 a month that will leave drivers under the minimum wage is somehow okay. But you as council members, do you think that's okay? Do you really want to relegate this workforce, a workforce that is in this crisis of lifetime debt and poverty because of the direct actions of the city of New York? Do you want to leave them? in that kind of a predicament, please don't tell us to wait. The last time we were told to wait and see was in 2015 when the vehicle cap was not passed. And we had Uber, Lyft, yellow, green, livery, black car drivers united on those steps fighting for the vehicle cap. When this body did not vote for it, three years later, we were back on the steps, not fighting for the cap, but having vigils for drivers who had taken their own life. Don't tell us to wait. Drivers have waited long enough. We can fix this. The city of $96 billion annual budget was given $6 billion in COVID aid, $2 billion above the deficit. While they, that might not be in the congressional letter, you can see that in Senator Schumer's testimony during a rally that we had on Zoom, you could hear it with his own voice. The city's got the money. All we're talking about is getting drivers more leverage at the table. Interestingly, when the chairwoman talked about our proposal for the $145,000, she referred to it as, quote, price fixing and treating it as a speculative asset. When she referred, when she was asked to comment on the congressional delegation talking about 145, 145,000, she said, well, they're just seeking a firm commitment. So are we. We're seeking a firm commitment to allow our members to get their life back so people don't have to worry that they're going to be in an entire lifetime of debt, that what they were supposed to leave behind for their children instead of an asset will not be an impoverishing debt. Our proposal is sound. The city has the money. And based on everything you heard today, you should understand fully well that it is absolutely necessary in order to get the drivers to the number on their, on their monthly payment as well as their overall loan that will allow people to survive, avoid bankruptcy, foreclosure, liens on their homes, on their bank accounts, and without working 60 hours, backbreaking weeks in order to survive. Mind you, only half the cabs are even back on the streets right now. 30,000 black cars are not even back on the streets yet. This is not the heyday. This is not the heyday. And you don't regulate. Talk about speculation. You don't come up with a policy for workers based on what you think is a heyday. You don't do that. You look at what you think, you know, you protect workers against the worst of their conditions. That's what the concept of minimum wage is in our labor framework. You don't come up with a debt relief program with a monthly payment that is based on a speculative notion of what you believe is their heyday. Please, council members, 
get this right. We can fix it. We've got the support. We've got the plan. The city's got the money. We've got the need. The TLC does not have the solution. We're not out here on day 20, 24 hours because this is political theater, because this is fun. These are mothers and fathers. Some of these folks are grandparents. They're out here for a sense of dignity and pride that we refuse to be cheated out of a solution from a crisis that the city of New York is responsible for. And we're not going to be fed a bunch of lies when they now try to abandon us and claim it as a victory in our name. That's why we're out here. We want a solution. We want our lives back. Add the guarantee to make it a comprehensive program so people can get their lives back. That's what we're asking for, Richard. So, thank you, Lily. And before, and, and, and of course, you know, we're gonna be working together. Richard, we're gonna be, uh, to end the 15 minutes that we allocate to this panel, we're gonna, yes, for you solve on the timing of three minutes so that we, after we hear from you two that have been important leaders in this movement, that also we get the time to hear the other uh, brothers and sisters who also will be testifying. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello. We do. We do. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Good, uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, everyone. My name is Richard Chow. I'm driving a couple of 16 years. I'm an owner driver. I'm an NYTUA member. I'm 63 years old. CV and TSCs are inflated medallion value, create the bubble, crush the medallion value. Nine driver committed suicide, including my brother, commit, Kenny Chow, committed suicide near the Gracie Mansion East River. He paid seven hundred thousand dollars for buy the medal then because he now is struggling, devastating, hardship, financial hardship. He lost everything. He lost investment. He lost the retirement. He lost the exclusive right. That's why he, he committed suicide. So on March 17, TSC Commissioner 2021, TSC Commissioner me and I conversation with her on the telephone. She promised me bring down my loan 50%. She lied. After 20,000 loan, to way we reduce, refinance my loan, $275,000. So the mother gave offer me $275,000, $1,600 a month payment. My principal is $389,000. This is commissioner as a 50 percent that reduced my loan. That's me 194, 194,000, 194, uh, 194 and 500,000 dollars. So even 1600 dollars, my loans, I cannot pay. I cannot, I cannot afford it. I cannot trust that the TSC commissioner keep lying and totally. Our plans and totally not help us. Allow them, give the room mama gain, collect $2,000 from us. She lying, she lying. Stop lying, please. See the plans and not help us. Her proposal is forcing thousands of owner driver going to the bankruptcy. I have the two kids to the raise the kid to the college. I have to, I have to pay a lot of payment, the taxi pay. Insurance, gas bill, toll bill, going to back to my Staten Island, maintenance, insurance, TSC and DMV ticket, a lot of household bill. It's a piling up. I cannot breathe. I need to add to breathe. You know? So we need we need a that as soon as possible. That forgiveness as soon as possible. We I don't want I'm to expired. Yes, yeah, please give me just one. One a few minutes, my dad will be continue to continue the the the, the sucker with the death sucker will continue to foreclosure and bankruptcy and 
we cannot survive. If we are the test limousine commissioner plans it, lock my hand on the wheel or like prison man, so I mean that I think I die. I, I, I don't want to leave my death to my kid next generation. Please, we want the real death forgiveness. We want the re, real death forgiveness. We want the city best store. We want the city guarantee. We want our life back. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank, thank you, Bob Ravi and, and Richard. And of course, you know, our prayer to your brothers and, and those great New Yorkers like your brother that we have lost in their family. And, and, and every day when, you know, for the last couple of years as we've been, you know, working with all of you together in the streets, at the stereo city hall, and now these days, you know, at Broadway here in front of city hall, I know when we look at your face, that the pain that you have, you know, is the one that represents those of the halos, the loved one, uh, that we will never be able to bring them back, but at least we keep fighting to be sure that nobody else uh, go through that situation. So let's just continue together. Like, you know, I think very, very, very clear, Richard too. This is about sitting on the table. We need to be open. We have to, we, there's a plan and I hold again, that in a meeting that I hope that can happen very soon with the OMB, TLC commissioner, the leadership of this group and stakeholders from the private sector, we should be able to sit on the table and be open, especially to this cause, not only to see what, have, what is good on this plan, but also to talk about how a additional $93 million uh, to be spent over the, the next 30 years can also bring stability and security to those working class people that work so hard with the dream that you can move on, not only to take yourself to be a middle class, but also to educate our children and many of your children, they're doctors, they are big men already, they engineer, they lawyer, uh, they work in the private sector. So thank you. And uh, now we're gonna be, again, this was the most important part, you know, from the leadership or the taxis aligned, but now we're gonna be calling, Jessica is gonna be calling the other taxi because of the numbers. We're gonna be asking you to please summarize in one minute, whatever it is that you think that you can add to what Verbi and Richard already have said. We're gonna be a strict with the time. If you think that you have something writing that is more than the one minute, yes, summarize. You can send the, the written testimony but now we are calling Jessica to please, you know, uh, start calling the members of the public and the clock will be in one minute. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, as the Chair mentioned, we will now turn to the rest of the public testimony. I would like to remind everyone that unlike our typical council hearings, we will be calling individuals one by one. And as the chair said, each panelist will be given one minute to testify. If your testimony is longer and you would like to submit written testimony, please do so by sending it to testimony at council.nyc.gov. For the public testimony, we will first be calling on assembly member uh, Mamdani followed by Zubin Soleimani of NYTWA, followed by Ali Langley of NYTWA. Assembly member Mamdani, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting for time. The member, for the assembly member, we can put the clock on three minutes. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you so much, Chair, and thank you, Council. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity here to testify in front of this hearing and in front of the many other council members who are on this committee. I want to make clear that I stand wholeheartedly with the New York Taxi Workers Alliance call for a city back guarantee. And I had a number of remarks that I had prepared to deliver today, but I think it's important to go over some of what has already been said earlier today to counter some of the narratives that have been put forward. You know, I, in, in listening to this testimony, I heard the commissioner of the TLC say that 
90 to $93 million over 30 years is an unfair burden on taxpayers. Um, and, and using that number as a citation of what the city back guarantee would cost. It is the city that brought taxi drivers to this point. It is the city that owes a debt to taxi drivers. This amount of money is but a drop in the bucket in terms of what these drivers are owed, in terms of what they were promised and what they have actually been given at this point. And in terms of the larger budget that New York City has, 90 to $93 million over 30 years is nothing. And it is something that can truly be found within the liability budget. $3 million a year is what is being asked for. And the difference that 3 million would make is the ability for drivers to make more than a minimum wage. And I find it extremely offensive to call this plan as a burden to taxpayers, when in fact, all I hear from my constituents who are taxpayers is that they want these drivers to survive. They want them to finally be able to live a life where they're not afraid that they will have their medallion seized, they will have their home seized, they will have any asset in their name seized by the predatory lenders the city set up to take advantage of these drivers. Additionally, I want to say that we cannot achieve the goals that true relief is consisting of without this guarantee. And any statements made that we can do that is frankly a lie. I would not be pushing the city back guarantee. I would not be standing with the entire congressional delegation of New York City, a delegation that disagrees on far more than they agree on if we did not believe that the guarantee is what was critical to bring this relief. The guarantee is what can bring monthly payments below $1,000 a month. The guarantee is what can ensure that if there is some kind of a default from a driver, that it is not their home and their entire lives that are at stake. A guarantee is what can actually give a 94% immigrant workforce a chance at living out retirement in the way that they were promised by this very city. We are not doing a favor to these taxi drivers by passing this plan. We are simply doing what is owed. I'm expired. I want to add one additional thing, Sergeant Google, which is that I find it very, very strange to say the least that the TLC has been trumpeting the achievements of their plan prior to the ratification of that very plan by voting of their own body. How is it that we are told this plan has doled out X amount of million dollars in debt forgiveness and X amount of drivers have been helped when the plan was only approved this week? What kind of a process is this where the results are being put forward before the plan is even being put in place? So I really do think it's important to note that and important to press on that, that we, we are not in opposition to the twenty or $20,000 that can be given to these lenders. What we are in opposition to is that there, there must be more than that. There must be a guarantee. We must change the terms of this plan. Everyone is in favor of this. It is simply a question of political will. The TLC and the mayor of this city must change this plan. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you very much, assembly member. Um, if the sergeant has put a minute clock on, we will next hear from Zubin Soleimani, followed by Ali Langley, followed by Peter M Mazur. Zubin Soleimani, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Uh, good afternoon. This is Zubin Soleimani. From, I'm a senior staff attorney at the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. And I just want to talk about the fact that the reason it's incumbent upon the city to, uh, to come up with something better, aside for the, the reasons that uh, Assemblymember Mamdani and Bearvi just said, is that the current proposal is simply fundamentally legally flawed. The rules that passed on Wednesday are not a legal or rational exercise of agency power. Um, the chair noted that the TLC didn't consult with the council before coming up with these rules, and it doesn't seem clear that they consulted with anybody or any data before coming up with these rules. If the stated goal of the rule is to, is to make medallion loans sustainable, which is what the rules say it is. Sustainable means people don't go into foreclosure and they don't go bankrupt. It doesn't mean they go bankrupt a year from now paying less payments along the way. It means they don't go bankrupt. This rule doesn't do that. There was no data presented to show as, chair, as Council Member Miller said that folks would be able to afford a living wage. The chair did not answer that question today. And, and Time just, expired. Hunted, saying that folks would be relieved and happy. That is not the standard. I, I can wrap up in 10 seconds quickly. Um, aside, as, 
So without, without that purpose being served, the rule simply isn't rational. Data was ignored in this, they, no bare bones simple analysis was even presented uh, to show that it would meet that standard. We're finding out today that the TLC is, com- is getting the data now. And now they're realizing what people will be afford to pay. Now they're realizing what people are making. You have to do that before you pass rules. This is completely backwards. Uh, in addition, the process was entirely irregular. I, just in the fact that uh, counts, the commissioners didn't even receive written comment until the day final final a uh, final rule for vote was posted online. Uh, commissioners said that they had no choice but to act upon uh, upon the proposal that was presented to them by the mayor. If, if regulatory rulemaking is simply an up or down rubber stamp on what the mayor uh, is handing down to a commission, that is not an actual deliberative process and is an insult to, to the invitation for the public and the affected parties to participate in this process. The council needs to force the commission to come up with a real plan that will provide real meaningful debt relief that would actually serve the stated purposes of the rule. Thank you for the extra time, Chair. Thank you. We will now hear from Ali Langley, followed by Peter Mazur followed by Sierra Angelis. Ali Langley, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Hi, my name is Ali Langley. I'm a staff attorney at the Taxi Workers Alliance. As we talk about the TLC's plan, it's easy to get lost in the uncontextualized numbers in conversations about market shares and industry trends. But this isn't an academic problem. It's not an abstraction. The cost of this crisis is a human one, and the solution must be centered around the people who are most impacted by this. The people who will be speaking to you today, who are rallying outside your windows, they are the people who will suffer under the TLC's insufficient plan. They will bear the violence of unending poverty. They're they're the people who won't be able to make rent, who won't be able to put food on the table, who will be evicted from their homes. They're the people whose bodies will bear the beatings of 12 hours a day behind the wheel, six days a week, all in service of a monthly mortgage payment that they can't possibly pay. What does a reduction in loan principal mean if you still can't make your monthly payments? What does a reduction in loan principal matter if you still are going to lose your home and savings in foreclosures because your loan principal is still double and triple the value? I'm expired. Uh, One second to conclude. Too often, council members were faced with solutions with problems that we can't solve. But today is not one of those days. There's a clear and simple solution at a city backed guarantee to the TLC's program. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now hear from Peter Mazur, followed by Sierra Angelis, followed by Rose M. Peter Mazur, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Good afternoon. My name is Peter Mazur. I'm general counsel to the Metropolitan Taxi Cab Board of Trade. We represent owners and operators of medallion taxi cabs, and I will address the city's proposal, much of which you've heard, and I will also be supplementing this with written testimony. Uh, the, the rule permitting only f- owners of five or fewer medallions is arbitrary. There's no basis for it. Uh, a debt is a debt whether you own five medallions, six medallions, or some other number of medallions. The city hasn't pointed out that most lenders are not participating, believing that this is not in their best interest. Borrowers are asked to stretch out payments for 30 or 40 years in order to make the loan restructuring work. Many and unfavorable terms such as personal guarantees continue to be contained in these unrestructured loans. Significantly, the plan offers nothing to medallion owners who don't have a lot of debt but are unable to get financing to purchase cars or other capital improvements. For true debt relief to work, it is necessary for all lenders to have an incentive to renegotiate. A backstop in the form of a guarantee by a government entity may be the best way to Time encourage- expired. If I can just sum up, maybe the best way to encourage lenders to reduce loan ba- loan balances. Legislation has been introduced at various levels, which would provide loan guarantees to lenders, reduce loan balances to manageable amounts, and make these benefits available to all owners and expand their availability to finance vehicle purchases and other uh, medallion-related needs. And that would be the best approach. I'll also be supplementing this way written testimony, and I thank you for giving me the time to speak today. Thank you very much for testifying. We will now hear from Sierra Angelis, followed by Rose Imp, followed by Lionel Morales. Sierra Angelis, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Uh, good morning to dear members of the Transportation Committee and TLC Commissioner Alonso Herrera Jarmasuk. 
Um, on behalf of the base owners and customers we served and our drivers, we respect respectfully submit the following comments. We are on a state of emergency. Our livery sector is currently dying before our eyes. And I hear a lot about the yellows, but our industry is in the same place. We enjoy back in 2014, over 27,000 vehicles. Today, we are at 8,000 vehicles. Seven years later, our industry is dying and I don't see any help coming from the city nor the city council has proposed any assistance. Today, we are looking for our communities that we cannot continue to serve because the truth is the yellows do not service our neighborhoods. Our livery sector has been pleading for years. Time expired. May I sum up? Yes, please sum up briefly. In 2018, this cap uh, was placed. Sira, uh, if you, may, you may use additional two minutes so that you can uh, finish your testimony. I, I appreciate it, uh, uh, Chairman. Um, our communities are the ones suffer when the small bases are unable to provide a ride from lack of our cars. And we are forced to deal with search pricing elsewhere and our community cannot afford those trips. Our livery sector has been put in a place that these TNC companies have seen an exponential growth. Unfortunately, our livery sector has been dragged along the ride. Our struggling bases are constantly having to tell our customers that we do not have vehicles for them during peak moments. Up to 50% of our calls are going negative every single day to, due to the lack of vehicles. If any sector should be allowed to ask to add vehicles to service our communities, I repeat that the yellows do not serve. We have asked in the past to the commission to allow us to restricted permits that will allow us to stay in business. This also will allow the drivers who have lost their licenses and cannot work, cannot sustain their families. They are dying and pleading for this. And although we have heard from the commission that is very sympathetic to these issues, we still need city council action. We still need those drivers, the freedom to work in our livery bases and the communities that they're accustomed to serve, the people of color, and the immigrants who are stranded every single day. Our bases need to choose how to service these communities and should not be punished or our passengers in our communities should not be charged amounts of, 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 of search pricing that they cannot afford. Our small bases are in crisis. We are, however, optimistic under the leadership of this oversight committee and also Time the expired. Commissioner Aloisi, her approach of seeing the sectors as separate entities and issue has been very refreshing. Also the program she installed for drivers is a lifesaver. We also thank Chair Idanis Rodriguez for creating the task force alongside with Chair Aloisi in order to analyze the sector, the needs and provide a revitalized option for our industry, for the black cars, for our car services. We look to the city and the TLC again to provide leadership in the state of emergency. We cannot respond to the demand for transportation in our communities. Thank, Thank you. you. And we'll see the testimony in writing. Thank you. Sira, I, I had a, a specific question. Yes. A, 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 how many driver, liver taxi driver do we have today? Did we have before this crisis in two particular bases, let's say semen, you have to use, to use them as a sample, semen and, and Riverside a car servers. Tell me where, where were those two bases when they had a higher number and what are those bases today when it comes to liberal taxi affiliating with those bases? These two bases have enjoyed basically having 300 to 400 vehicles uh, at a given time back where the TNCs were not um, adding all these amounts of vehicles and they were servicing our communities. But today we bases are, let's say Riverside only has approximately 150 vehicles. Last time I checked, they lost almost 200 to 300 vehicles. 
um, and also semen uh, has approximately 79 vehicles. So this is the kind of situation that we are in. The calls keep coming in because they like our service, but we unfortunately have to turn these people down. Thank you, thank you. And, and for me, I want to be clear that, you know, as, as I was stand today at the press conference with our brother from the, especially the Yellow Taxi and, and, and the Taxis Alliance, you know, I spoke very clear that, you know, for me, this is like a crisis that is affecting both. It's affecting uh, the Yellow Taxi and a medallion, and also is affecting, you know, the map and pop, a small liberal base that for many decades been a, a, in a working together. And as I say, I used to be a 110 or, or Caddy car service, a Bailey car service, a, and what through a driving a liberal taxi that I put myself through City College and became a teacher after graduating. So, and that's my, I know that my story is a story of many. Uh, or our brothers and sisters who are here. Uh, so I know that, you know, unfortunately, uh, uh, the commissioner said, and we both failed because we had the number to pass the cap in, in 2014, mm -hmm. in both sides, uh, 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 but we didn't do it. And I remember that day in the morning, I called a press conference and we had the number, let's vote it. And we start the vote. And now we pay the consequences to, to both industries to the family traditional black car service, to the liberal basis, and to the yellow taxi. So Chairman, we cannot go, we cannot go backward now. I'm sorry, we cannot go backward now, uh, but you know, by no putting the cap in 2014 and looking at the liberal basis difference as we also, as part of the solution, we do believe that we should create our liberal base uh, type of license that we should also give some, uh, allow them to increase the number for those who only will be adding new one, only limited to the liberal basis. Uh, so I know that the solution to this crisis be, beside, you know, the, the yellow taxi, for me as a person also, to also fight for the traditional black car as also for the liberal basis, because the big one, they will survive. Uber will be here, live will be here, there's a market for everyone, but the price of successful should not be destroying the little one. I believe that the that the cap was a one size fits all. And we have shown that we have not grown exponentially that way. Uh, we have grown alongside demand. And given the fact that the cap was put in place and over 30,000 licenses are off the streets, I think we have um, enough to prove that congestion is not gonna be a problem and we will work directly with the Transportation Committee and the TLC to address those concerns. Thank you. And I appreciate also that as, as TLC was a partner, you know, during the discussion together with the uh, leadership of the Taxes Alliance, ac the academic sector, private sectors and the council on the working around the yellow taxi medallion task force. I also have seen how the commissioner have been consistently, consistently present in the library and, and black car uh, taxi uh, uh, task force that we are right now. And even though at some point my soul and I've been there, my staff Evelyn who do budget legislation is always there. So I also appreciate. We just want to move from the recommendation to the action. So again, as we will, a, a hold that to have meeting a uh, very soon with city hall to talk about uh, what other thing can be done beside this initiative that already started implemented by city hall we also like and we con will continue working around the library and black car medallion so thank you city thank you chairman thank you chair we will now hear from rose imp of CUNY, followed by Lionel Morales, the New York City Black Car Fund, followed by Avik Kabeca of Carmel and the Livery Roundtable. Rose Imp, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Council members. My name is Rose Imperato, and I'm a concerned citizen here in New York City, along with I can't even imagine the number of the thousands and tens of thousands of concerned citizens as we've learned 
horrifying details and educated ourselves about this issue over the last six, seven years that this has been happening. And as a consequence of that, I have actually gone down to the 24 seven protest that's going on right now, several days over the last 20 days um, and have offered help in my voice as a concerned citizen. And I had somebody come up to me yesterday and say, I, I support you, but you're, you're not going to be able to save these drivers. You're not going to get them out of poverty. The city council isn't going to be able to help them. And I said, why do you say that? And he said, because the banks have already gotten their money and banks are way more powerful. And I'm here to say, I believe in my city council. I believe that you care. I know most of you. I've seen you in action and you care. And I I'm feel expired. like, I'll wrap, uh, Sergeant. I feel like um, you won't be talked about in the news if the banks win again. That's old news. Everybody expects it like this guy who said this to me yesterday, but you will make the news if you are the heroes here. If you step up and say, okay, this is a difficult thing to do, we're gonna get it done. We're gonna make sure that these drivers live, that they survive, that they get out of poverty, that this horrifying scenario and New Yorker magazine, I don't know if people read this magazine. Can you see what's right here? It's a yellow, okay? This cab, they, they did a, a, a cover to say magic formula. All these things equal New York. All these things equal New York. I know, Chairman, I've, you've spoken to my students about leadership and diversity, and many of these cab drivers, they have access. Right, thank and you. you and I'm I'll, sorry, Miss. Yes, I'll just Thank wrap for two seconds. These cab drivers have accents. Don't let immigrant cab drivers with accents be squelched and that their voices are not worth hearing. And I believe in you. You can make history. You can make news. Please, City Council, do the right thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. And apologies for mispronouncing your name. We will now hear from Lionel Morales, followed by Avik Cabeza, followed by Quidratala Saberi. Lionel Morales, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Good afternoon, Chair Rodriguez and members of the Transportation Committee. My name is Lionel Morales and I'm the Communications and External Affairs Specialist for the Black Car Fund. Chair Rodriguez is very familiar with the fund, but for those who aren't, the fund was created by New York State statute in 1999 with the purpose of providing workers' compensation coverage to black car drivers throughout New York. Over the years, the fund has grown to over 500 member bases and we cover an estimated 100,000 drivers throughout New York. We're also proud to have added many additional free health and wellness related benefits, including 24 seven telemedicine coverage, vision coverage, dental insurance, prescription urgent care and diagnostic imaging discounts, a mental health and wellness program that's administered by the Independent Drivers Guild, and an additional 50,000 death benefit above what is mandated by state law if a driver dies while on the job. We have created an invaluable safety net for drivers, but unfortunately, all the benefits in the world can't change the fact that the, tr the traditional black car industry has been decimated by the COVID-19 pandemic. For example, take a look at the congestion surcharge revenue brought to the city by the FHV industry. Compared to 2019 and early 2020, the surcharge amount being generated by the FHV Time industry- Time expired. At least 25%. Uh, I'll, I'll probably finish like 30 seconds, thank you. Uh, this figure, while standing, doesn't tell the full story. At the height of the pandemic, traditional black car bases were down as much as 95% in business, while high volume FHVs were down 80%. Since then, traditional black car bases have only recovered between, are still down 40 to 45%. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. You can submit the rest of the testimony um, via written. Thank you so much. We will next hear from Avik Kabesa, followed by Kujitrala Saberi followed by MDZ Islam. Avik Kabasa, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. And we, we will give a big three minutes, a big but no one second more, you have three minutes. Thank you very much, Chairman. Starting Good time. Afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Avik Kabasa. I'm a member of the Libre Roundtable and the CEO of Carmel. And we really don't mind using our tax dollars to help the taxis. But what I'm here to, set, to, to, to emphasize that we also, delivery and the four hire traditional need help. Unfortunately, what I heard today is the TLC commissioner three times praising the decline of the four hire vehicle as means of increasing the value of the yellows. This is not the way, this is not the role of the TLC to, to prefer one group over the other. So I'm going to urge the, the city council to intervene and make sure that the right goal of helping exactly what this 
oversight hearings is relief, taximidinone relief, and supporting the black car and livery service be the outcome of this call. And our solutions are very, very simple. I think the, the chair, you mentioned it. We did not cause the congestion. We did not cause the overflow of vehicles. We should not be penalized for it. And as CIRA from the Livery Base Owner Association mentioned, we, the taxi do not serve the areas we do. All we are asking the city council is to force the TLC or to assist the TLC or to encourage the TLC or to do whatever needs to be done with the TLC. We offered that solution almost two years ago and a year ago. We would like a restricted livery or traditional for hire permit to be added on a moderate level that cannot be dispatched by the high volume services. Therefore, the high volume services cannot sort of find a back door to more vehicles. So we can service our need. We, we reject 50%, 50% of our customers. We say, sorry, no car. And they have to go and pay 300 times what we charge with Uber and Lyft. So we urge the commission, the, the, the city council, that part of this passage of the, the relief for the taxi, which we will gladly participate, that there will be a condition of allowing a, a, a restricted permit for, for the traditional uh, basis livery so that they cannot be dispatched by, by high volume. And the second thing, because of this uh, cap, many people who it was their first uh, entry to this industry rented a car. And for years they are paying for rent a car. They know they want to make it their livelihood. They want to make, they want to make it their business, but they are forced to keep on renting and pay exuberant money to renters because they cannot obtain their own permit. So we would ask the, 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 the city council to please, one, issue the restricted license to help us. It's a moderate. Two, allow those who rent vehicles over a year Time to expire. decide to buy, uh, to get a permit. Thank you very, very much for the time, Chair, Chairman. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your testimony. We will now hear from Quadratala Saberi, followed by MDZ Islam, followed by Gerson Fernandez. Quadratala Saberi, you may start Hi. when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for letting me uh, participate in this uh, today's uh, session. Uh, my name is Saberi, and I'm a driver for 34 years. I've been driving for 34 years, and I don't have any retirement. I lost because the value of the medallion came down. And uh, we know that the reason the medallion came down is the decision of the city official, you know, that anybody who did it, did it. But uh, at this point in time, I'm 70 years old. I cannot drive more than maybe seven to eight hours. And uh, how can I pay that the $1,600 a month for the bank? And uh, the, the MRP is now working for us because it let the bank uh, raise our payment, monthly payment up to $2,000. And- uh, Time expired. Yeah, I, I can survive only for $800 a month at this age and, and cannot be more than that. If, if it's more than that, I will have to go for bankruptcy. And that, that the city plan that has, it, it takes me back to the part of uh, bankruptcy. Again, I have to go for bankruptcy. That's Thank it. You. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you for your testimony. We will now hear from MDZ Islam, followed by Gerson Fernandez, followed by Suva Baraji. MDZ Islam, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. We, we are unable to hear you. Can you please make sure that your speakers are on? Hear me? Yes, we can hear you now, Sergeant. If you could just restart the clock at one minute, please. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks for giving me the time. 
Uh, I'm a uh, owner driver. I'm a member of Taxi Worker Alliance. Uh, uh, I believe that the, this country is an opportunity. This country is an hope. But now this country is uh, the nightmare for me. I trusted the CD. I trusted the TLC. But they failed. They failed me. Uh, but they inflated the price. I bought the Madeleine. The, now the, uh, the Madeleine price goes down. We already lost our nine brothers, uh, including three, uh, three owner drivers. How many blood you need? Now it's time to clean up your hand. You should come step up and, and take actions to save our lives. Uh, this is the time. Uh, you should do something. Now the city span, that, that is uh, not working for us. We need uh, actual relief. The Madeleine acid structure should be as per the market value and the payment should be below $800, then we can survive. We can bring our- Time expired. We, our kids can, uh, we can send our kids in the e school. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Gerson Fernandez, followed by Suva Baraji, followed by Augustine Tang. Gerson Fernandez, you may begin when the Sergeant calls time. Starting time. My name is Justin Fernandez. I'm a yellow medallion holder. I'm driving a yellow cab from 2000. I'm 67 years old. I'm with the New York City Taxi Alliance. Our leader is Ms. Bhairavi Desai. I bought a medallion because at that time, it was a good way of earning money, taking care of my family and paying the bills. We were 13,587 yellow taxis. Then in 2014, the city and TLC allowed Uber, Lyft, and other app companies to infiltrate the taxi business. That's when the taxi business was in a mess for all. In two or three years, the Uber, Lyft, etc., had about 110,000 cars on the road. Driving was a mess, and there was no business for any of us. I don't mind Uber, Lyft joining the competition, but the city and TLC should have regulated them. Because of this, our medal in price went down, and with very little business for the yellow time calendar, expired, it was difficult for me to pay my bills. Please help me with our debt forgiveness. You talk, you can talk to our leader, Ms. Desa, and she will enlighten you on how with this procedure. Please, um, I love, finish up. I, just a little bit. I love driving my yellow taxi and enjoy my job. Thank you very much for the time to speak. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. We will now hear from Suva Thank Baraji. You, I'm sorry for that. Uh... I'm sorry, Chair. Okay, so we... I think that I appreciate, you know, that the Chair, I'm a, sorry, a we're unable to hear you. Local being able to share and, and I share I believe we're having some technical difficulties with your mic so many great workers. So you know, working together, we should be put a solution to this crisis. But our solidarity to you and thank you, Chair. We will now hear from Suva Baraji, followed by Augustine Tang, followed by Harjit Singh. Suva Baraji, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hi. Are you hearing? Yes, we, we can, can hear, you. hear you. Please continue. Good afternoon, everyone. I am a street fighter now. Name is Shubesh Boiragi. I am a professional taxi driver. I am serving in this city 23 years as a taxi driver. We are here 20 days in front of our honorable city mayor, mayor house. I think everybody knows why we are here. Our demand, to, we want justice. Especially, I want to know where is my money, 100,000. 
I gave to the city 2014. My family want to know, this, this society want to know, I paid $6,000 every month for this medallion from 2014 to 2017. Still, I have debt more than 700000 on my shoulder. Please, I, I, <coughs> additional time, please. I am very, very sick now. I had eye surgery last May 9, 2021. I bought this medallion, 850, 100,000. After bought this medallion. If you could uh, please, if you could please sum up. Uh, please, additional time, please. Okay, one more minute. I am very, very sick now. <coughs> I had eye surgery last May 9, 2021. I bought this medallion, 850, 100,000. After bought this medallion, within a one month, 1,000,000 000 Uber lift came on the street. Medallion price goes down. It's completely manipulate the city. Everybody knows except mayor. Only the mayor ignore us. You know why? Because we are immigrants. I want to say to mayor, <coughs> you remember, today you mayor only, only for immigrant voters. We respect you, you have to respect us. We, we want to ex <coughs> expecting like this. No respect, no justice, no peace. I want to salute all of my friends who suicide for them. But I, <coughs> I am not. Thank you, thank you, sir. Now. Thank you. I sir, will thank try you. to find out. Thank you very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Augustine Tang, followed by Harjit Singh, followed by Mohammed Tipu Sultan. And I just want to remind everyone that if your testimony is longer than the one minute allotted, please submit written testimony to testimony at council nyc.gov and it will all be considered. Augustine Tang, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Um, hi, my name is Augustine Tang. I'm 37 years old and I've been a taxi driver for six years. Uh, I inherited uh, a medallion from my father and also a $530,000 loan. Um, for what the city's uh, plan will give me is uh, it will make, uh, my, my lender is, Marble Gate, and it will make my monthly payment sixteen hundred dollars, uh, and it will drop it down to two hundred and seventy-five thousand uh, dollars. I, for one, I know that I won't be able to pay uh, this, uh, manage this monthly mortgage because of how much high expenses that comes with the taxi cab, uh, along with the fees, congestion, surcharge. Uh, on average, let's just say, uh, uh, I remember TLC commissioner was saying that. Uh, uh, the, on average, people are grossing seven, uh, seven, seven thousand five hundred. I'm, I'm assuming that's gross because there's no way people are making seven hundred, uh, seven thousand five hundred dollars, uh, with the amount of traffic that has been in the, uh, uh, in the city as of late, and it's just going to be getting worse. And that's two thousand dollars of that is going straight to congestion surcharges and also the taxi improvement charge. And um, you're talking about time expired. Oh, 1600 with that and additionally with 700 car payment 300 liability insurance it's going to be Thank very you, difficult please, to make ends meet. yeah uh so basically i i really urge the city council to really understand the, uh, how much that goes into the medallion and adopt new york taxi workers alliance's plan for us for many of us we're, we're all really struggling we're barely and on average uh, a lot of these medallion owners Thank you owe very much, Mr. twenty-five thousand dollars in credit card fees because of what the city has Thank you so much. We appreciate your testimony. We will now hear from Harjit Singh, followed by Mohammed Tipu Sultan, followed by Jose Pereira. Harjit Singh, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. I'm sorry about that. I'm having uh, connectivity issues. Um, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Harjit Singh, and I'm the son of a taxi driver. Uh, we owe 500000 on our medallion. My dad cashed out his life insurance policy for 35000 
We owe two credit cards, one's 25000 the other one's 18000 Six years ago, my father and a couple hundred Sikh South Asian and Seth Bamparhar came and called on the city for uh, our livelihood and the medallions uh, crushing. Those years of inaction from the city and TLC cost my family 3000 a month, 36000 a year, and over the course of five years cost $180,000. And we still owe $500,000 today. So for those that say, take the current form of the program and wait, I say, no, we can't. For every month we wait, we are figuratively burning money by payments to an underwater unmodified loan. The city's proposal modifies the loan as high as $330,000. Taxi Workers Alliance Time expired. reduces this to 145000 The value is only $100,000. $100, if you don't believe me, check the TLC's website for the current foreclosures for September of 21. Uh, the rest I'll submit. Thank you very writing. much. Yes, if you could please submit it via written testimony. Thank you for your testimony. We will now hear from Muhammad Tipu Sultan, followed by Jose Herrera, followed by Vinid Malhotra. Mohammed Tipu Sultan, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Yeah, we can talk. Hello. I can talk. You can talk. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Please begin. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. And uh, Tipu went to the, you know, the pray and uh, he gave me his, his sign. Uh, my name is the Arsim Lal, and my you know uh, uh, I driving the cab 31 year, and my age is uh, six, uh, 31 year, and my age is uh, 61, and my uh, uh, payment is uh, 3,942 and 43 cent, and uh, and plus repair and plus you know other expenses. And I keep my medallion, and I I, I enjoy my uh, driving the cab. I am very much. I try to give give the good service all over the world in in my taxi. And uh, you know, I try to get you know, more. I, I try to give them more service to the public. You know, and public they like me, and I try to time give, expired. And uh, you know, my you know. I, Please help me, and uh, you know I, I speak in little English, and I try to get a good service of the world, you know. And my payment is too much, I, and I I can afford that. You know, I want the new car, and uh, and thousand dollar plus, and I I can pay that one, you know. Thank, and, thank you very so, much. Thank you very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Jose Herrera, followed by Vinod Malhotra followed by Shime Giazzo. Jose Herrera, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Jose Herrera, are you, are you there? Yes. Hello. Okay. Please begin. We can hear you now. Okay. I drive a taxi 35 years. And then right now it's impossible to pay the mortgage because it's a lot of competition. I'm very sorry. And then too many taxes, congestions, insurance. Forget it. This business is destroyed right now. That's all I have to say right now. That's it. Did you listen thank, to me? Thank you very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Vinod Malhotra, followed by Chime Giazzo, <coughs> followed Hello. by, please hold a minute, followed by Tilak RJ. Vinod Malhotra, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Hello, good morning, you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Hi, good morning, all CMs. Thanks for holding the end cap is death. This is a really very, very important and necessary for life savings. Manalian owners who really underwater on their no fault due to app companies, not due to COVID. Sir, we don't want bankruptcy. We 
bought Jura Mandal in as our big dreams. We love this iconic taxi permit. I don't know you about if you love, you must come up with the real debt forgiveness with, by the NYT plan. There's nothing wrong. This is been 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 for everyone. Sir, as you know, I attend this so many hearings. It's a long time waited when I saw there is no any output, no any actions. Look to uh, protect our medallion after feeling most hearings like fake to me. I decided to go for bankruptcy. So when we do bankruptcy, we lost almost $100,000, which is we spent on as down payment. It's $100,000 equal to 1 million for us because we work, time expired. We work very, very hard, sir. I have three kids. They are going to call us. So I know see any way. How can I say, pay, pay their survive them or how can I pay their expense? So please and help the rest of my friends. That don't let them go to the bankruptcy. So thank, thank you so thank much you, for your time. Thank, thank you. you for your testimony. We will now hear from Chimmy Guyatso, followed by Lock RJ, followed by Wayne Chin. Chimmy Giazzo, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Hello, yes, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Chimmy Giazzo. I'm driving a taxi since 2000. I bought a medallion like uh, 2009. Since then, I was enjoying an American dream. And since after 2014, like, uh, you know, TLC uh, give a uh, permit to the unregulated car. So then after so our business totally gone down. So, you know, like uh, according to the TLC uh, plan, that doesn't work for us, $1,600 we cannot pay. So according to the TWIA plan, please uh, with that plan, we can work. And then, you know, like uh, the mayor at the TLC throw us in the Hudson River. Please, you gotta save us from the Hudson River. Save us from the Hudson River. So, you know, nine drivers already suicide. Now I think um, this is my turn, my turn. I mean, like, uh, you know, this because of this medallion, every time we fight- Time expired. Know, please help us, please help us, help thank, us, please. Thank you very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Tilak RJ, followed by Wayne Chin, followed by Balkar Singh. Tilak RJ, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Time expired. Time starting. Thank you. Good uh, good evening, council member. To having me. My name is Jean Tanis. My medallion number is six F twenty. I am a seven three year old driving taxi for straight thirty four years. I am a member of. Taxi Workers Alliance with Design. Uh, I, I have a loan before with Meadows paying straight 2,772. That means 33,267 a year. Now I have a loan with Marble Gate, Field Point, De Palma. Uh, but since the pandemic, I stay home with my taxi, with insurance, everything for 3,004. 65 yearly for two years now. Uh, I can't go to work for some health issue. I am waiting for debt forgiveness I'm for 125,750 monthly, then I can survive. On Phil Point gave me two offers. First permit, 750 for three months and 20,000 from TLC and my loan will be down to 275,650. Thank you very second, much for your testimony. If you could please submit the rest in writing, we appreciate it, thank you. We will now hear from Wayne Chin, followed by Bokar Singh, followed by Pabitra Saha. Wayne Chin, you may begin when the Sergeant calls time. Starting time. Hi, my name is Wayne Chin. I own a debt driver and also a member of the Siwaza Alliance. Um, the BSE plan uh, doesn't go far enough to help all the driver. Uh, we need a best start to the plan so all the owner can survive. And because of the BSE plan, I stay paying, I, I, uh, we stay paying 2,000 a month. So, plus my giga experience, 
operating expense, insurance, gas. It's going to be like uh, over 4,000 a month, my operating expense. So the TSE chairwoman saying we're making 7,000 a month. I have uh, 2,000 left. How am I going to pay my rent, pay the food? So it, it doesn't make sense. You know, the number doesn't add up, you know? Uh, because we have to bring the payment to uh, no more than $800 a month so we can survive. So bring it to at the best out to the loan, bring the principal down, uh, uh, payment down. That's all we're asking. Let us survive. Let's Time expired. Um, Thank you please. very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Balkar Singh, followed by Pabitra Saha, followed by Dorothy. Lakante. Balkar Singh, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Hello, Hello my name is Balkar Singh. Uh, I'm driving like a 32 year and my payment is 2735 and I don't like the TLC plan and want to, I want to keep my medallion and uh, uh, city plan is no good. I want to pay only $800 plus more other expensive and I have children and family Please, city council, please save our life. You can save us, city, city and TLC. TLC want to destroy everything. Please save the taxi industry. You the good, you the best. God bless you. Please save our life. Nobody listens. TLC chair woman never come here. Mayor never come here. Nobody want to come here. Please, Mr. Rodriga, Mr. Chairman, God bless you and all you city council committee. Please save our life. We are immigrant. I live here like a 35 year. I drive 32 year. Please save our life. We are immigrant. We are all color, color, color man and woman. Please Time expired. save our life. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Pabitra Saha, followed by Dorothy Lacante, followed by Randall Wilhite. Pabitra Saha, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Yes, good afternoon, uh, everybody. All of the respected person, chairperson, TLC commissioner, and Senate uh, members, council members, all of them. So I cannot explain my uh, whole story more than Ms. Boirovi Desai is explained everything. And I like to support uh, her and uh, they, this is the all we all we can say and uh, rest of the decision of yours and all of the official peoples please uh, try to see us and uh, what you can do let us know previously there was so many um, so many i mean so many uh, kinds of uh, meeting was going on and we are on uh, in front of the city hall 24 hours seven days a week so please I'm expired. help us thanks thank you very much for your testimony we will now hear from dorothy lacante followed by randall wilhite followed by muhammad islam Dorothy Lacante, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. My name is Dorothy Lacante. I'm in the fight, this fight from the beginning. I understand the commissioner means, she thinks she means all good things for us, but it's not. Because at my age 65, starting a yellow cab, driving a cab since 1987, that's made 35 years. I was expecting to retire with dignity. I did not expect to go back. A business that I have right now, they turn it as a swept shop. It's not a business for me, it's a job. If I want to buy a job, I will not buy a yellow cab right now. So I can afford $1,748 a month, but they only think about the medallion. What about our private life? We have other expenses, our household, our life, what it is, there's nothing for us. We cannot sit down and Time expired. the medallion. So please, I adopt the, the, the backstop for the city and I hope the city council help us out with this. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Randall Wilhite, followed by Muhammad Islam, followed by the second Muhammad Islam. Randall Wilhite, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Good afternoon. My name is Randall Wilhite, and I'm a staff attorney at the New York Legal Assistance Group. I'm testifying today in my personal capacity and not on behalf of my life. Since TLC announced its medallion relief program in March 2021, NILAG's attorneys and I personally have spent countless hours speaking with the industry's different lenders about their willingness to participate in the relief program. I am testifying today because I am deeply concerned about a pattern of misrepresentations that the TLC has been making about the success of this program. I only have time to provide one example today, but I look forward to following up with written testimony. In its statement of base basis and purpose of the proposed rules for the relief program published in mid-August, the TL stated, quote, the TLC's owner driver resource center has worked with over 700 medallion owners and a dozen different lenders on renegotiating loans. Lenders have participated in the process and have offered restructuring and forgiveness terms that would meet the required parameters of the proposed rules. Time expired. This is a complete fabrication. When this statement was published, at most two lenders had made any specific co commitments to provide amounts of loan forgiveness through restructurings that would allow borrowers to qualify for grants under the program. Instead, multiple lenders have expressly indicated that they are not interested in participating in the program, at least with respect to any significant number of borrowers. Another lender, one of the largest in the industry, has been so disinterested please, that it has not been- summarize and then submit the rest in uh, writing. Thank you. I, I urge you in the strongest possible terms to uh, investigate the administration of this program, look beyond the misleading press leases and beyond the deceptive testimony of the commissioner. This program has okay. never made sense. Uh, thank you. Thank you thank very you. much for your testimony. We will now hear from Muhammad Islam, followed by Muhammad Islam, followed by Tariq Munir. Muhammad Islam, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Yeah, my name is Muhammad Islam. I'm uh, uh, driving at 23 years in yellow taxi driver. I am agree with Taxi Worker Alliance plan. City Hall, I am highly request to you, please save us. TLC try to do following aggressive lender plan. Why I say aggressive? Only one month mispayment, they took my medallion. I am suffering four months five members in my family. Please do not work for lender, work for immigrant hardworking taxi driver. I do not want suicide or bankruptcy. I want favorite, lovely taxi driver for TLC. Please, you have power. You have power. Please do something for us, debt forgiveness. Please do something. We want a life. Five member, we have a dream. Thank you very much. Thank you for helping us. All of member, I am very excited to in front of you guys. Please help us. Have a good day. Thank you very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Muhammad Islam, followed by Tariq Munir, followed by Ibrahim Diallo. If there's another Muhammad Islam, you please begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Hi this, is, hi, this is Mohammed Islam. I have been driving my yellow cab is 22 years. I have a loan is 536,000 Malbu, Malbu grade, offering my 275 to restructure under the TLC plan. And I have the TLC and city inflate the medallion price. My loan. NYTWA pro, pro, the, pers, the proposal is $145,000. The monthly payment is $800. I want the city bank stop. I cannot approve the TLC plan. So I want a real debt for give debt forgiveness i want a justice i want a i'm expired like my life my life back thank you so much 
help me us. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Tariq Munir, followed by Ibrahim Diallo, followed by Nina Odashi. Tariq Munir, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Hey, good Starting afternoon. Time. Hey, good afternoon. This is Tariq Munir. Um, the TLC give the plan. That's not affordable plan. It is for, uh, for us. I work 10 hours, but cannot make money for uh, living. Taxi Workers Alliance are our uh, representative. They give, we give, a, we, we suggest a plan and uh, she, she is uh, working on it. That is a very good plan to make the balance down like 145 and monthly payment will be like $800. This proposal is very good for taxi drivers, taxi owners. This proposal is a life for me and other drivers. In this way, I can save myself from bankruptcy. Please help old owners, drivers, so they can enjoy their, their rest of their life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Ibrahim Diallo, followed by Nina Godashi, followed by Erhan Tunsil. Ibrahim Diallo, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Hi, my name is Ibrahim Diallo. I am a staff attorney at the New York Taxi Workers Alliance. Um, you've heard a lot of stories today from drivers, from um, experts, um, from their advocates. I wanted to just focus on the objective measurements of whether this plan is working. Um, and I think anyone who looks at it will come to the conclusion that the TLC is just putting a Band-Aid on this crisis. Um, the chair herself recognized that the most important measurement of resolving this problem is whether drivers could afford their monthly payments. Uh, last time she was here in front of you all, uh, she said, and I'm quoting here, my goal is to work with the council and drivers to find a solution to reduce driver monthly payment to less than $1,000 a month. That's what she told this council before. Now the TLC has come up with a plan where they are saying it's gonna cost anywhere between $1,500 to $2,000 a month. That is 50 to 100% more than what the chair herself said the goal Time should be. Time expired. Uh, if I could wrap up quickly. Uh, so yes. now the TLC, the TLC is recognizing that the, that the problem with this plan, and they're saying again, making another commitment that they're gonna subsidize loans. How long will this be, the subsidy will be for a year? Will every driver get this? Is the TLC making, is they, are they making another um, empty promise to a workforce that has lived through a series of broken promises? There's a better solution that does not cost as much. You should adapt the NITRO plan or call on the TLC and the mayor to adapt the NITRO plan. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Nina Godashi, followed by Erhan Tunsil, followed by Nizam Ahmed. Nina Godashi, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Nina Godashi, are you there? If someone could please unmute Nina Godashi. Okay, we will come back to Nina Godashi. Um, seems there might be some technical difficulties there. So let's move on. We will now hear from Erhan Tunsil. Erhan Tunsil, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Hi, my name is Erhan Tunsil. I'm a yellow medallion taxi owner driver of 22 years. I gave my best years to the taxi industry, and I did so with the expectation of being taken care of in my golden years. That's what the city of New York made us believe. I will turn 62 next March. I'm one of those almost senior owner drivers whose light at the end of the tunnel has been put, on, put out by the complacency of our regulators. We need a real solution, and that solution lies in the proposal by the Taxi Workers Alliance with a city guarantee. 
a proposal which puts the owner drivers back on the road, making a living wage. I'd like to end my testimony with a quote by Benjamin E. Mays. The tragedy of life is not found in failure, but complacency. Not in you doing too much, but doing too little. Not in you living above your means, but below your capacity. The means have been provided by the federal government. Now we need this great city of ours to live up to its full capacity and the end and this horrible nightmare on the driver's Time expired. Today. I'd like to point out time is of essence. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, let's try and see if Nina Godashi, are you available or are you able to testify? Starting time. Okay, we will try you again at the end of the, the public testimony. We will now turn to Nizam Ahmed, followed by Val George, followed by Joan Botex. Nizam Ahmed, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Okay, my apologies. It does not look like Nizam Ahmed is with us um, or is, excuse me, on the panel. So let's go to Val George. Val George. You may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Please accept or decline. Hi, everybody. Uh, where to start? I don't know. Just one word. We'd be shameful if uh, we all of us um, make an effort to save the yellow taxi, which everybody knows that it's one of the landmark of the New York City. Would you live without the Statue of Liberty or the Empire State Building or Times Square? We need to do that. It's a historical moment. Let's do it and the history probably in the city will be thankful to us. At that please, uh, Ms. Desai and the New York Taxi Workers Alliance plans makes a lot of sense, backed up by economists, professionals, uh, the CEO, the financial officer of the New York City, the controller, said this plan is absolutely viable and realistic. Uh, please look at it. If you if you have a questions, call the Ms. Desai. Time expired. Everything to you. Thank you. That's all I need to say. Thanks very much. Thank you very much for your testimony. Okay, I see that Nina Godashi is on the screen. So Nina Godashi, uh, you may begin when the sergeant calls time and you are unmuted. Please make sure to unmute your mic. Starting time. You are, Nina Godashi, you are still muted. You should receive a message that asks you to unmute your phone. Are you able to unmute? Okay, you are still unmuted. Someone should be asking you if you would like to unmute your phone, if you could do that. Okay, it appears that we are still having some technical difficulties. I apologize for that. Okay, Nina, we will come back to you because we do wanna hear your testimony. So we will try and sort out those technical difficulties. Let's turn now to Joan Botex, followed by Mahmoud Hossein, followed by Mofazol Islam. Joan Botex, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. 
My name is Joan Bottex, and I'm speaking to you on behalf of my husband, Etienne Bottex, who drove taxi for 45 years. The yellow cab was his income to support his family, but due to medical issue coupled with age, he had to lease his medallion. The initial lease income was 3,200 monthly. As the industry crashed, his income declined to 1,500 and to 950 pre-pandemic. Loan payment of 3,500 pre-pandemic and a loan balance of 550,000. On 10 6 the leasing company White and Blue sent a letter stating monthly payment will be 200 due to the medallion crisis. Since March of 2020, we have had no income from White and Blue. Please accept uh, the New York Taxi Alliance proposal so that drivers can have the quality of life they deserve. As of this moment, my husband has nothing. There are drivers who has the same situation. Please understand our struggle. And Time expired. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for your testimony. We will now hear from Mahmoud Hussein, followed by <laughs> Mofizal Islam. Mahmoud Hussein, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. My apologies, is it Shakawat Hussein? Shakawat Hussein, you may begin when the sergeant calls time. Starting time. Shakawat Hussein, if you could unmute your mic when you receive the request to unmute, and then we will be able to hear you. Okay, we will we will try you again in a little bit. Let's go now to Mofizal Islam, followed by Sami Khan. Mofizal Islam. You may begin when the sergeant calls time. Time starts now. Okay, let's move on to Sammy Khan. Sammy Khan, you may begin when the sergeant calls time and please, when you are asked to unmute your mic, please accept that. Time starts now. Sammy Khan, if you are there, Please unmute your mic. Okay, we will proceed with Shishir Roy, followed by Sultan Khan. Shishir Roy, please begin when the sergeant calls time. Time starts now. Okay, we will move then to Sultan Khan. If Sultan Khan is still on the panel, please unmute your mic when the sergeant calls time. Time starts now. Okay, let's see if we can go back 
to Nina Godashi, and I apologize for whatever te technical difficulties we may be having. Nina Godashi, are you able to unmute your mic now? If you are unable to unmute your mic, we do wanna hear everyone's testimony. So please submit it. Again, you can submit it via email to testimony at council.nyc.gov. And you can do that up to 72 hours after the hearing. Okay. If I have inadvertently missed anyone that is registered to testify today or who is on the panel, and I have yet to call your name, please use the Zoom raise hand function now and you will be called on in the order that you have raised your hands. Okay, I see that Jaslyn Kaur has raised, has a raised hand. Jaslyn Kaur, please begin your testimony when the sergeant calls time. Time starts now. Sure, good afternoon. Thank you so much. My name is Jaslyn Kaur. I'm the daughter of a 62-year-old tax medallion owner driver in Queens, and I'm about to share what I have shared many times over. Um, in 2014, when the medallion markets crashed, I was meant to drop out of university. So my family went into $60,000 down on student loan debt, $50,000 down on medallion debt, many thousands in credit card debt, and three years back on property taxes. To put it plainly, many more drivers than the nine who took their own lives in the past years will not survive this debt crisis. 94% of drivers are immigrants, many who work more than 12 hours a day. And what the city has done from speculation on fragile markets to allowing Uber and Lyft into the city is disgraceful, horrific, and orchestrated. The city back guarantee plan from the New York Taxi Workers Alliance is key, and without it, drivers are at the mercy of their lenders. TLC has even yet to garner buy-in from enough lenders to make their plan viable. I will wrap up. The average debt of $500,000 under their plan would still be in $300,000 of an amount for many drivers. So I want to know, where is the dignity in having just a little bit less debt than you did seven years ago? And who else do you need in addition to Senator Schumer, the incoming and outgoing controllers, 12 members of the New York congressional delegation, to tell you that the New York Taxi Workers Alliance plan is sound. Thank, thank you very much for your testimony. We have a hand raised from Galina Kaminker. Galina Kaminker, you may start your testimony when the sergeant calls time. Time starts now. Hi, my name is Galina Kaminker and I'm a medallion owner and I'm actually uh, I'm a member of few medallion owners within my family, but I today I want to speak up in regards to my mother. I understand everybody's talking about driver owners. My mother is not a driver. She's a 90 years old woman who was left the, for my father who wasn't driver owner and who tried to build um, a backup for her retirement. He's gone. My father, my mother is 90 years old, left with uh, six medallions all together, different, whatever. She is not entitled to any rescue program from the relief program because she's more than five, but she's in debt, big debt right now. She's on her social security, which is $700 a month. She's not getting any money from management because of the pandemic crisis and everything. She is actually going, the bank is going after her. They're putting a judgment on her. My question is, what do people who are 90 years old or even 70 years old have no income, cannot pay their debt, have to live that long? Because I guess she's unfortunate that she lived that long because she has no money to pay. What I'm asking is actually she's entitled to restitution. The city owns it to us. Uh, they, they, they took the money from us. They use it to keep the, to close the loopholes. The, the, you know, we, we were fine, but now she needs to be rescued. And uh, you know, the restitution is a rescue for my mother because still she will not help her. And I have to pay her expenses every month because otherwise she'll be on the street. With $700, tell me if you're capable of living in New York City. She used to pay the, the taxes was her retirement plan. Thank you and very much for your testimony. Thank you very much for your testimony. Um, 
It appears we have one additional hand raised. TLOC RJ, if you have not testified already, please start your time when the sergeant calls time. Time starts now. Good afternoon. We can hear you. Yes, yes. Good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon, council members. I speak behalf of my brother. My brother has a medallion since 1994. His loan is over than 500. After the 20 from TLC has loan will be 275 and 1600 every month. How we will survive we cannot live like this rest of our life. The city should support our union plan. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. And thank you to all who have testified today. I will now turn it back over to Chair Rodriguez for closing remarks. Chair Rodriguez. Thank you, Jessica, for the great job that you did uh, conducting, you know, this portion of the of the of this hearing. Thank you to the commissioner for also staying with us and listening to everyone. Uh, I gotta give credit for her to not only to leave a representative but to be with us. I appreciate it. We will continue this conversation. Thank you to the Taxi Alliance. Together, we we had the responsibility to bring the industry back. Let's do it in the name of those individuals that unfortunately we lost. Let's do it for our families and let's do it for the future of New York City. Thank you. And with that, this hearing is adjourned.